Morning. Good morning. Welcome to Feedback Friday Art Edition. I'm your host, Jacob Johnson. How's everyone doing? Sorry, I was just talking to Dave just now, so I got a little distracted. How are you all? I should probably pull up my chat so I can see you. All right, so stream should be going. Yes, I see my face. Very good. All right. Hello, on time. Who knew? My hair's getting too long. Okay, anyways. Hello, welcome to the stream. We're doing art today. Um, basically, uh, the floating islands is out there. You should probably be aware of that. Um, things are wild. Lots of good challenges, uh, and people seem to be enjoying themselves, I hope. Um, so, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I've been uh, enjoying kind of watching everyone's kind of like journeys through the, the gameplay. Still stuff to discover for people, um, and I'm excited for people to get to that point. Um, but yeah, I know that um, I think it was yesterday, uh, maybe in the morning, uh, I think the first Moose Hunter fully completed the uh, the adventure book requirements of capturing each of the paragons, which is very exciting uh, to see have happened so quickly. Always impressed by you guys. I would try like, anytime I like start talking to my computer, Charlie's like, I must interfere. Just get that cat butt right there on stream. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Thanks for the recipes. Have you been cooking them? I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I've been getting my butt kicked in the floating islands. I hope everyone else has too, in the fun ways, not necessarily frustrating. Uh, I know that some of the areas audio is cutting out. Uh-oh. Is that, is that happening to everybody? Is my audio cutting out for people? Um, audio okay there? Oh, okay, cool. It was just a, a issue with, with your stream somehow. Not mine, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, so been, uh, been enjoying kind of like actually realizing that I didn't have the best in slot for a couple of traps, even though I've been like being like, guys, you had to go get stuff if you don't have it yet while we were working on the area. Um, and then, of course, the day comes when I launch and I end up, you know, going on whatever island and it's like, oh, I'm not very good. <laughs> so I've actually built more traps, I would say, in the past, like, three months than the past, like, three years of Mouse Hunt, uh, just kind of, like, finishing off uh, certain setups and stuff that are definitely making a difference. So if you don't have, uh, you know, certain bits of your equipment and you're still kind of like on your way to getting to the floating islands, uh, it's going to be there. Uh, it's not going away. So, you know, you might, you might, you know, want to think about kind of like taking those journeys to, to pick up uh, bits of equipment. That said, um, the way that the area is designed, uh, even if you do not have the absolute best and uh, you don't want to kind of like pull out some kind of big, big charms and kind of, you know, like you're, you're not necessarily going to go all out trying to get like, you know, 90 plus percent catch rate. Um, you can still do everything in the area. You can still complete everything there is uh, with it, especially um, with how we kind of made the, the warden mechanic work, like you could literally like go in with the tacky glue. Uh, I really don't recommend it. Uh, upgrading your Oculus would be a nightmare, but basically you could do kind of like the, the kind of all the paragons and, and get through everything by kind of, you know, having a, a lot more fail to catches than you would probably want. But um, basically it is intentionally uh, a little more challenging. We want you know, uh, there to be this kind of like good excitement behind having great equipment. Um, and even if you don't have the best, you can still do it, uh, especially because the, the wardens and paragons will pursue you uh, while in their space. Uh, so even if you can't hunt your way to them, they'll hunt their way to you. Um, but yeah, uh, 
said, uh, definitely exciting to see where people are in their journeys. Uh, quite a range of kind of like where people are at. Um, so very fun. Yeah, 90% catch rate. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, no, it, it is definitely a lot lower for certain ones. Um, I know uh, Draconic uh, is a particular sticking point, um, one that uh, we've heard you on. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, maybe we did tune that dial a little high uh, at, at the kind of request of, of probably me pushing Dave to be like, hey, can we like make this as extreme as possible and just totally destroy the players and, and we'll make them suffer. Um, so we're, we're uh, certainly kind of like looking into kind of, you know, making it a little more kind of not absolutely destroying face, but um, yeah, Draconic is brutal. Uh, yeah, it was, it was certainly intending to have kind of um, basically the best that you could uh, have and even then uh, a little a little spicy with with all that and so I think you know uh, having the feedback and and kind of fairly so uh, you know we can kind of see that that was just a little too far um, and then uh, I, I know that there's been some fun uh, the agent M has been having uh, anytime anyone decides to visit a high altitude law um and uh i i would uh I, i'm a little surprised that no one's pointed this at one out uh, and i think it's probably fair to to state it now um but if you go to the mouse kind of list of of adversaries and you take a look at kind of the effectiveness meter on the various high altitude characters. The Mist Maker, for example, is very effective to use Hydro Power type against them. The Regal Spearman, very effective to use Draconic, if you would think that anyways, but uh, Captain Cloud Kicker, very effective to use Tactical. Take a look at Agent M though. Just, just seeing if anyone's noticed this yet. A little, a little different for that character, so uh, that should be something uh, to note. But um, hopefully, that'll uh, you know become a little more in control. Agent M seems to have hacked our our, our systems to become a little more powerful. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, basically, we've been kind of you know getting some great feedback from from all you guys. Uh, I know I've spent a little too much time just kind of watching uh, everyone in, in Discord and the forums and just kind of like literally like following along, uh, just witnessing the journey that everyone's been on and just enjoying that a lot. Um, and just kind of witnessing people unlocking kind of like, you know, the the way it works and, and it's absolutely fascinating uh so <laughs> the there there was some good math chat uh about kind of probabilities and how to calculate all that that was fun um but yeah just even seeing how people have kind of like tried to grapple with pirates and and you know oh should i use bait keep and and like uh all the all the like really cool kind of like community work put together. Uh, I love seeing people sharing kind of like, hey, this is the board I have. This is like the kinds of setups I have, what kind of stuff I'm looking for. And like basically crowdsourcing, like what should my next run be is being really cool to see you guys kind of like set up for that. I love it. Um, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, so basically we've, we've been kind of like seeing what's good, what isn't good. Um, and you know, what we like to do. Let me just see. I can quick message. Okay, cool. Just making sure uh, I didn't get a message from Dave. Like, Shh, don't talk. You know. Uh, uh, but basically, you know, um, a good game company will kind of like get quick feedback from from the actual kind of like core players. Uh, obviously, we try and kind of like 
collect yeah i am a discord lurker it's true i try to like we all try to collect um as much kind of data and kind of feedback as possible through testing um but it's very difficult to kind of like get every single kind of little bit of detail and kind of like uh there's especially with this area there's just so much to it that it was you know a lot to kind of like factor together and i think honestly uh we've been getting great feedback about how good a job we did on the release um but that said i think that you know um there's some little tuning of things that uh is is uh certainly fair to do for it um now that we've had it out for long enough to kind of really kind of see what's happening with each of the areas um I was like this morning talking with Dave being like, Hey, if, if, if the, like the topic of balance and stuff comes up, is it okay if I like, you know, maybe just answer some questions if it comes up and then I'm just like, Hey guys, can I talk to you about this thing that I want to talk about? Um, but yeah. So, so basically I guess what I'm getting at is we're doing a little, little tuning here and there just to improve the experience. Um, obviously like, uh, players are certainly enjoying the challenge and having there be the the like the actual sorry I'm being blinded right now uh, there there being this kind of like really uh, meaningful choice between uh, equipping kind of like really good gear and using certain kind of like charms in the right places and and like it making a difference. Um, a lot of kind of previous areas it's kind of like yeah you can come in with kind of like the correct power type and you know if you have like the best in in slot you'll like dominate easily but yeah like here it's it's more kind of like every kind of like little thing you can push and pull with the the setup actually you'll feel a difference and that's i, I think a lot of people have found that fairly rewarding uh especially with there being so many power types involved and giving the player agency over what route they go, um, you could come in with only one really good setup. And if you have enough resources to kind of roll that map, you could do, you know, like so much in the area with just that one perfect setup. Um, it costs a lot more uh, cyclone stones to do it that way, but you know, it's, it's an area that is available for that kind of thing. Um, but that said, we also don't want it to be the case where uh, one of the particular power types is an absolute, like, just avoid it, don't ever, like, it's not worth it. Um, obviously, we still love the idea of it being kind of like, oof, that's, that's still spicy and challenging, and, like, it's tough. But it shouldn't require you to have a, a like, tier 15 prestige base, which, good luck, um, with, you know, the the uh, Dragon Slayer cannon, good luck, or goodbye gold, uh, and, you know, Ultra Dragon Bane charms for every hunt, you know, like, that's a bit extreme, a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, so basically, we are going to tune down Draconic. It's, it's a bit spicy. Um, and then also Agent M, there is actually just a bug with Agent M. He hacked the system. He did not have the effectiveness uh, amount uh, toned for what we intended. Uh, so he's basically twice as hard as he's supposed to be. Um, and uh, there's also, um, we did, we are doing something different with the launch pad. And I love that we're doing that. Um, where it's kind of like, yeah, you can come here, you can farm for cheese, um, but it is better to go on the island and enjoy the adventure while farming at the same time and kind of like wrapping that together so that it's more about kind of like, well, you know, if you're absent from the game and you're on your last hunt when you like go to sleep or something, you know, yeah, you go back to the, the launch pad because that's just, you got to go somewhere. Um, it's kind of like the intersections for the labyrinth, as we've mentioned before. Um, and basically, when you show up to the area as a new player and you don't have your Oculus unlocked for uh, the, the cheese modifier, um, and maybe you're, you're just kind of, you know, wanting to just kind of like really casually just hunt on the launch pad, it should feel a little bit more kind of like, yeah, this is actually not extremely bad to do. Because right now it just doesn't feel 
like a good thing to, to hunt there whatsoever. Like in, in like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's better currently to like show up, go to the market board and buy the cheese to just jump onto the island so you can upgrade your Oculus as fast as possible. Like that's, that's not necessarily fun to do it that way. Um, so basically we're, we're tuning it so that the, the launch pad does have a better cheese uh, curd rate where basically they're still tough mice. They're, they're still gonna, you know, like, uh, you know, steal the cheese uh, that you offer them, just kind of generic cheeses or whatever. But um, uh, now they should basically, I believe, and you know, I don't, I guess quote me on this, but say, hey, this is a this is a Jacob source of information. He's he's an artist who kind of like you know dabbles in in kind of like the the design realm, but doesn't necessarily know exactly everything that's going on. So you know, a grain of uh, of salt quote from from me. But basically, uh, the intention I think is to make it so that the the launch pad mice will kind of always have curd drop not as frequently in terms of quantities um but like they'll they'll have the drops um so when you do catch stuff it's not just kind of like "Ooh, i finally caught a thing and i got no curd <gasps> like that's just kind of exhausting um so it, it will be a little bit closer to the on island experience when you first unlock the cheese curd i don't think it'll be as good as that though so it, it'll still be kind of like when you can you unlock the the second tier and and you want curd and you're needing it like but you have enough to kind of go on a run go for it like go find an island that you like that has the the cheese modifier going uh and then oh, goodness the sun is just terrible but yeah so basically you know uh it, it'll still have that kind of like it's better to go on an adventure than to just kind of sit and farm, but it will feel less punishing to just sit and farm if you wanted to do that. Um, I'll just, should I just be back here? Anyways, we're actually an art stream today, so we should do art, and it's not even about the floating islands specifically. It kind of is though. Um, so we're going to be doing some Halloween stuff. Uh, I'm just going to jump over to Photoshop. Here we go. Um, why is the kite flyer so evil? The kite flyer is is a tank, um, and basically, what's kind of interesting is the kite flyer is more evil on certain power types because, uh, you know, like law, for example, doesn't have the highest sit like stats compared to the other power types. Like you go a, you go on a hydro run, and your stats are pretty good overall. You have decent power and decent luck if you have a nice setup for that, right? Um, but law, it's, it's not so good. But, you know, so basically um, the, the kite flyer was uh, tuned for kind of like a pretty decent setup. So when you go on kind of like a weaker power type run, you're going to feel it a little more probably. But even, even with a good power type run, you're still going to get, you know, your butt handed to you sometimes by the kite mouse. Um, so I believe that one might be getting numbered little toned down just a bit because um yeah, like it certainly a lot of people um that have you know pretty awesome setups are, aren't feeling it as much but um it is a mouse that can kind of like be a little frustrating because it's a little less controllable um you know like th there there's certain challenges that are good and certain challenges that are just frustrating Right. Um, when you can actually control the outcome uh, of kind of like when you're going up against a challenge and it's just brutal, but you have tools that you could access if you decide to like, you know, go for them. You know, you you're playing a, a challenging RPG and you fight a boss and it's like really hard, but it's like, OK, well, maybe, you know, if I go and get this super cool item I can you know like come back and it'll be much easier to defeat that's a good challenge right that that has like you know something you can kind of like tune and, and adjust and work around and apply a strategy and get a different outcome and you made that change and it feels rewarding when you do that if there is something where it's like you literally can't control 
the punishment, you know, you try your best and it's still just as punishing. Um, that's more frustrating. Um, so, you know, it's, it's trying to kind of like figure out ways to give you the tools to combat the frustrations um, because, uh, you know, I think that especially in an area like this, um, having challenges is fun and rewarding, especially when it's like, hey, this big area is coming out. It's got all these kind of like things it asks you to accomplish and, you know, uh, and all these kinds of different ways to go about doing it. Um, it it's, it's pretty exciting to be able to, you know, challenge the player to like bring forth some incredible tools that they they probably have gotten over time um, or to kind of like go and quest for them and return once you've gotten the the elixir of of heroism um, or the prestige base as many would state is kind of a very important tool um, that said you know if you are not anywhere near the kind of Valor Rift um, prestige based stuff, you know, it's not required. Absolutely not. Uh, the Imperium jewel base or whatever it's called was kind of put in because um, we did identify that, hey, you know what, we shouldn't expect people to have this, this base. Um, that requires a, a decent amount of time to kind of have to go and do that. Um, and the base is such an important piece because it applies for all of your setups. So we did add that new base. It's it's not like free though, obviously, if you look at the kind of the costs around it. And it's not as good as a really good prestige base. So you if you're in that boat, there is a decision you can make. You know, you can kind of like enjoy sticking it out in the floating islands and maybe kind of like, you know, have that moment of like, whew, I took my minotaur base and turn it into something that it's actually the area is balanced around this base um not for 90 percent catch rate mind you but it is balanced around that base uh and and then you know you can just go on and go forth with that, and that that's how that's intended um but yeah i'm i'm currently you know slogging through with a subpar prestige base I decided to invest my time in getting some of the the like traps, the best in slot traps I did not have, um, and kind of like I was like, this should be a good enough prestige base, and it's eh, it's not the best, but I think I'll I'll go back at some point once I'm kind of like, you know, I'm still too excited to be in the floating islands to leave it, even if I am getting you know shoved around, um, so. You know, it it's it's I enjoy the area because it, it provides that like good set of goals, even even without it being like, hey, build these traps that are in the trapsmith. Um it's kinda like I I just went out and got what is the, the physical trap from Queso Canyon or the geyser. Uh what is that one called? I just got that. Like, I had most of the parts ready to go. Um, the Smoldering Stone Sentinel. I decided I wanted to try out, like, pure power in physical. Um, and so I've been kind of like... Uh, I, I ran out and I finished off my uh, Calora run that I, I had set up, but I hadn't actually done um, to kind of finish off building that trap. Didn't get a rib. Uh, after, I think, 70, I, I mean, I know that people have done, like, thousands of runs against Keller, so obviously not surprised I didn't get one. Uh, but yeah, so I finished off that trap. Uh, that was quite rewarding. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's fun because uh, I, I like that the area does kind of ask that of me. Um, yeah. The kite flyer is quite deceptive, you're right. Sorry, I've not been doing very good at watching the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I know that um, uh, the denture base has been quite, uh, the, the signature series denture base even has been quite uh, a powerful tool to have 
in your back pocket if you need it for certain uh, elements of the floating islands. Um, but yeah, so just just to put it out there, just so you guys have a little heads up about it, if you're kind of like thinking like, oh, all right, well, I got to finish off my Draconic run. Maybe I'll just do it to get it out of the way today. Um, there is, in time, not tomorrow or anything like that, but it's, it's you know, we're working on kind of getting the tuning a, li a little um in time we're gonna we're gonna you know bring the draconic into a more kind of um fair territory you know i think that uh it's it's pretty exciting how tough it is but also it's pretty brutal and not fun for a lot of people uh so yeah sorry it's just jumping over to the chat make sure i didn't miss anything send my more and all that goodness um so yeah if you if you kind of like or waiting for doing your Draconic run. Um, in time, it might be a little more feasible. It's still going to be brutal, though. Put that out there. It's still going to be brutal. Um, don't expect it to be an easy run. Uh, but yeah, so it's just, just so you know. All right. Oh, yeah, Smoldering uh, Halloween. I. Now that I, I have the, the trap, I'm like, yeah, I, I could go for that. I could I could enjoy that as a, a Halloween skin. Um, so what we're actually here to do today, guys uh, and gals and, and everybody, y'all, um, we are going to be working on a new Halloween dirigible skin. So this is our first kind of like dirigible skin that is coming outside of kind of what the area shipped with. Um, and it's coming from an event, so that's gonna be really fun. Um, it will basically be kind of like, uh, you know, you, you got to earn this thing during the event or it goes away, I believe is the case. I can't guarantee that that's how it's gonna work, but that'll be fun. Um, I, I suspect it's one of those things that maybe it'll return as well the next year. I don't know if it'll be an LE thing. Um, uh, I don't know specifically how we're implementing it so i can't really speculate and shouldn't speculate as i speculate currently um but basically um yeah we're gonna have new customization stuff uh coming in and so i think it should be fun um so there are definitely themes to work with as you're probably well aware uh, we have the kind of haunted ghost ship theme for uh, Halloween, and that's just a little too perfect for, you know, creating a dirigible design. Um, and then, yeah, I actually, I like the uh, the good ship lollipop skin, the trap skin for that. If we did a, a, a dirigible design for that, that could be fun too. Um, I don't know how long I'm planning on streaming today. Uh, <laughs> It's already half an hour after I started. I've just been rambling. Um, my apologies to people who are here just for the art. I, uh, I'm real bad at just kind of staying on task for that. All right, you know what? I don't think I need to duplicate that layer to do this. I'm just going to make a new folder. And instead, what I'll do is I'll set this group down. And this one and okay, so what I'm doing is going to sketch out the balloon first. Um, and so I'm going to go for the ghost ship design. I feel like that's kind of like a hard theme for this that will, you know, just make perfect sense. You, you've you seen the ghost ships and battled them, and now you are, you know, uh, a captain of the skies. And so, you know, if you're going to get to dress up for Halloween, why not let you kind of, like, dress up as something terrifying and, and awesome? Um, so I'm going to just start with kind of using the same shape as the base balloon. Basically, 
what we need to do with these is make sure that, oh my goodness, it's so laggy. My computer is not being happy for the past little while. I've actually had like the blue screen of death hit me before, and that's not good. That's like something really wrong with my computer to have that happen. Um, yeah, so basically I want to kind of like give players the ability to, to kind of like make their dirigibles into a ghost ship. Because I think that's fun. Um, so I want to change the silhouette to be a little more kind of like haunted ghost ship. So how to do that is the question. Because the the ghost ships themselves, and I'll pull up the mega ship from uh, last year's event. It's it's got like all those uh, the the sails themselves. So we do have a sails layer, which I think maybe we'll we'll try and kind of like do something a little closer to this somehow. Maybe maybe like the back sail will um, have like a whole bunch of you know, sales stacked up or something like that. That could be interesting. Um, actually, maybe I'll just do the sketch layer up here. Because I haven't done a lot of um, uh, dirigible designs yet, I'm still kind of figuring out my process for it. So, if, okay, I feel like a sketch on the very top will be fine. So then I can kind of just start to sketch everything together. Alright, so... Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, like, um, I, I feel like, at least for, you know, the first year of it, I want to have, you know, like, a dirigible skin for basically every event. Like, even if that's not what you guys want, I'm gonna want to do it. So... Just try and stop me, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so I, I feel like one of the things that's fun about the mega ship is like just the sheer number of sails that it has is kind of cool. So I'm wondering if we can kind of like make that work for us. I don't know if we can. Um, part of it is the balloon is always in front of everything else in terms of the layers. Um, kind of feel like would it be weird to have a little one up here? I think that actually could work. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we could, you know, stack a whole bunch of sails back there. That could be fun. Um, I feel like having the let's see, we kind of got like some little kind of like ribbons and stuff flowing in the wind. Um, too much green on last year's. Yeah, we could we could like what I'm thinking is more more like this kind of level of kind of like coloring and rendering where it's a little more muted down. The mega ship on the map is like very vibrant and saturated and and punchy because I wanted it to kind of like really pop on the map and as a HUD element. Um, but when it comes to like an illustration, I kind of want to like pull it back a little. That said. Um, I think that with the dirigible being quite a small element on the kind of like the HUD itself, when you're actually seeing it kind of with the island, you know, I want to make sure it reads cleanly. I want to make sure it, it you know, uh, pops well. Um, but 
another side of that is also I want you to be able to mix and match the pieces because that's kind of a cool thing about the the dirigible itself is like you should want to kind of like you know throw your your cloud balloon with your you know uh, pirate hull and your your haunted sails and have that kind of you know maybe look somewhat decent um, I don't know how well this is going to pair with anything else because because of how specifically themed it is it's it's kind of like extreme um, but I think it'll be uh, pretty cool and you know you can certainly at least make something that looks uh, unique um, by combining all kinds of different stuff and the more that becomes available the more options you'll have to find something that you like and I think that's the key so I don't know if this is quite the direction it should go in but this is kind of where I'm just kind of going at the moment, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it is. That's all I got. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Floating Island's journal theme is something we're not kind of immediately uh, diving on, um, but we certainly love the potential of what that could be and. Uh, I think kind of next steps would be um, when a developer has the kind of free time to kind of like figure out that kind of potential system that would be, you know, how we would kind of move forward on that. Um, so I don't, I don't think it will be an anytime soon uh, thing, um, but I hope we do end up, you know, making that at some point so that um, people have a nice way to kind of like show off their their customized, personalized dirigible. Because um, uh, like right now, a, a nice way to do it is to share your uh, your your log, your flight log with your loot and stuff like that. Uh, we made sure to kind of toss it in at the very end, at least, so that it was visible uh, in that view. So I think that's something that's nice to share at times when it's like, hey, whoa, look at this thing that I did. Um, and then you also get to see the, that person's cool looking ship. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, even if it takes a little bit of time to kind of get that system up and running for you guys, uh, at least we'll probably have more cool designs uh, that people will be able to show off at that point. So that should be, that should be you know, a nice addition if and when we get to it. So, uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if it's actually in development at this moment, but I also do not know uh, the particulars about who's working on what exactly. So, you guys love to speculate, and I love to just guess. So, we're a terrifying combination, I think. What do we think of these sales? Do they kind of work, or are they just like, eh? Like, it doesn't quite make sense as to how they're set up like this, because they should be kind of like connected to a mast, so that there's kind of this counter-pulling rope to keep it for keep these sails from, or at least kind of connected to a mast like that. To keep the sail from just kind of like, you know, flying away like this, they need to be actually tethered to something. Um, but I don't really have that. I suppose all it would need would be kind of like this kind of, um, you know, rod at the base as well as the top. To restrict its movement, so that works. Um, so we can just work with that. All right, it is a lot of sales. <laughs> we can pull back on that. I, I think it's a little too much, probably. Um, all right. 
propeller on the back. Yeah, Norman is our, our newest dev. Yeah, very great guy. Uh, he did a, a him and Franco uh, worked uh, on a lot of the kind of like characters uh, descriptions and stuff. And I think that uh, really, really cool, fun stuff uh, that came out of, of the collabs and, and just smart guy, nice guy. Happy to, to have him on board. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting. And uh, I know that he's enjoying Mouse Hunt and doing some maps and stuff with people. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. No, failed to catch. Oh, it was a kite flyer. Of course. Of course it would be. Poor mass deprived sales. It's true, it's true. How do these even work? Only Calamity Carl knows. Alright. We'll we'll jump off that and come back to it, I think. So the hull itself, I feel like this is going to be one of the fun kind of elements of it. Um, I would say that maybe the hulls aren't the most exciting part of some of the designs. Like, I don't know, like the um, the, the pirate one. Uh, just having like the balloon for the pirate ship is cool because it's got the big kind of like, you know, skull and crossbones kind of thing. Um, and like... Uh, the, the cloud one, I absolutely love the the sails on that one, where there's just kind of this wispy kind of like bits of cloud just kind of fluttering off of it. Um, so I feel like this one, I kind of want to like make sure the hull is like one of the cool elements of it. Um, so let's see. Yeah, undead crawl. Um, so this part here needs to be consistent, just so that the sails for the other balloons or the other dirigibles have the same attachment points. That's important. Um, so that I'll keep there and there, because that's a consistent thing. Um, but everything else we can kind of play around with. So these. These ropes here um, actually come from the balloon itself, or sorry, the, the hull itself, not the balloon. It used to come from the balloon, but we changed that so that we could have a little more freedom to kind of make things uh, customized, like the actual kind of ropes. Um, if we wanted, we could have like lightning ropes or vine ropes or kind of, you know, golden ropes or something like that. Um, but the way that was working when it was a part of the hull, or a part of the balloon, um, it made it so we couldn't make the hull go like up here and do crazy stuff because the ropes would be kind of always over top, and that that proved to be a little more restricting. Um, so we switched it so now the ropes are a part of the hull. So now we could have kind of like creepy ghost tendrils or something like that connecting to whatever balloon is up there, and that's kind of exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah, kite flyer dirigible skin. When you fail to catch a thousand kite flyers, that's how you get that one. It's a lie. Don't, don't, don't try and do that. Um, that is not a thing in the game. Uh, but what if it was? All right. Um, I'm sure that someone's already very close to a thousand fill the catches on the kite flyer. Obviously that will happen, but probably sometime before that. Ooh. Thank you, Michelle. Or shall I say Larry? There's a, a very good Larry link for today. So I'll share that after lunch. Um, 
think you'll be quite quite pleased. I'm excited about it. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's get the hull sketched. I wanna I wanna like figure out this sketch, and then we can kind of tweak. Um, yeah, one thousand kite flyer fellow catches are a thing. Totally. Alex Flaxman says, two ribs, try three. Come on. Uh, no, we're not giving out uh, the, the ribs. But, yeah. All right, so um, looking at the kind of the other uh, ghost ships, there's definitely this awesome kind of like theme of it literally breaking apart um, and just kind of like not actually being kind of like fully intact, which I think is going to be pretty cool looking. So I'm just going to give myself a, a brief outline so I know the kind of expected constraints of the design, and then I'm just going to hide the old hull. Um, so this one, I really like a that like big kind of back end of those kind of like huge sailing vessels where there's kind of like the captain's quarters and like the lights kind of you know shining through back here and stuff like that and um, so I want to kind of give that some nice volume there. Um, and then I suppose I don't want to make this this design too good because you know if if finally someone like gets the the, the pirate ones and they're like, oh well, but this event one's just so much cooler already. Why would I even bother? Uh, that would be a little kind of disappointing if it was way better than any other really hard to get design. Although I think that when when a design is just hard to get, it adds a lot of kind of like nice kind of value regardless. Um, but obviously I want people to enjoy using these and get excited about getting new ones. Um, so holding back on on a design, I don't think is necessarily a good thing either. You know, I want I want everyone to want want to own this, um, and maybe it's something that people will just enjoy putting on during Halloween because it's kind of like you know thematic. I do enjoy that you get to actually like put a costume on your your ship for the the event. I suppose that's kind of what traps can do already with trap skins, um, and we do enjoy adding Halloween trap skins. That is also something I'll be working on shortly. Um, not this stream, I don't believe. Probably not. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun to to make some trap skins for some traps that are probably getting a little more use than they might have before uh, or more people have managed to uh, decide to go out and acquire them thanks to the floating islands so. and I think the um, the smoldering stone sentinel is it uh, I think that one does not have any trap skins yet because it's like it's a pretty tough one to get but it's been out long enough that I think that it's reasonable to to uh, consider that for the dress up potentially. Well, let me let me know what you guys think if that's a terrible idea or not. I'm just uh, a little biased because I I went out and decided to get it, and now I'm like, oh, but what if I dressed it up though? Um, Oh yeah, it did have the Jade Lantern skin. You're right. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. You're right. That's correct.
I should know that because I I'm pretty sure that I was the one that made that skin. So want to say so I think um, design wise I'm gonna make this like very kind of like broken apart. Um, the sails I think I'll maybe try and make them a little more kind of like one piece torn apart a little bit. Like I think maybe there's a little too many or it's not grouped up nicely. Um, the balloon is like just underwhelming now. Um, so I might I might go a little more ham on that. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy. <laughs> Physics expert here. They work with ghostly magic. Accurate. Accurate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sails on the back is a terrible design. I'm aware. <laughs> it, it's a great way to spin out and just get pulled from from the sails because yeah, it is very much uh, not how that should work. We're not working on um, uh, propulsion engine here. Um, so yeah, more more minimalist. There is definitely too much going on. Uh, the sails on the back do look pretty ridiculous and fun. Um, it is it is kind of bothering me though that it is kind of like just ridiculous. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm thinking, what if we did have kind of more sails on the front? Because we can do that. The system works that way. Um, and then it is more kind of like stabilized on the back. And maybe even the, the, the balloon could have kind of like some kind of sails sticking out of it. Would that be ridiculous, maybe. I don't know, like I do enjoy it being just a hodgepodge of sales somehow. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play around. I think a little. We're we're gonna do a little experimenting today. Um, little little mixing and mashing, kit bashing and just trashing the art. Um, right, so I'm gonna duplicate this so I don't completely lose the sails, but I'm just going to nuke those. Just see if we can't make that work a little nicer. So this is the original kind of shape, just so that I have that as a reference point. I think maybe I'll go for kind of the, the aesthetic bit more but using similar design principles. So what if this has a taut kind of you know sail kind of coming out to a mast there. Um, This is clear what's going on at all yet. Hopefully, it'll make more sense in a little bit. Okay. Well, that doesn't match anything on the ghostly ships right now. Let's see. Threads trailing and falling off. Looks like a fluffy tail. <laughs> Those. Uh, all right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, based off of how the hull looks, I don't think I need to worry too much about there being a, an underpinning kind of structural skeleton for the sails. Um, do I still want to try and make that sail work? I don't think I do. Let's see. I don't, I don't like what that was doing. 
just going to go back to giving it like a more kind of tattered and haunted looking shape. It's just less less kind of fun, friendly design, more old and, and shipwrecked and lost at sea. So that feels a little bit more kind of like what a ghost ship's, you know, giant stabilizing sail might look like. And it'll be kind of cool because I, I, I think we could do kind of like bits of fabric literally just kind of like floating off of it or something. Or it's like ghostly and, and like a little bit see-through uh, kind of ectoplasmic looking. Although I, I don't know if that will work if nothing else on the ship does that. Like, it'd be cool if the balloon did that, but then that really... Like, I can't actually make that transparent, because then we get, like, really weird thing with the sails back here, kind of, like, showing up in unintentional ways. Charlie, Charlie just fell over the window. Just slipped from the ledge onto my desk, not it. Um, let's see. Pirate one needs the cannons fixed. Oh, okay. I mean, we could look into that, maybe. It does look like a ghost butterfly wing. You're right. Yeah, especially with this kind of bit at the bottom trailing off and the this kind of shape. Right. It's very butterfly. All right, so I'll try that for now. We can, we can come back to that, I think. Um, but I, I did like this ridiculous idea that I had of just kind of like adding sails against the balloon. I don't think it's a good idea, but it's an idea. So now I feel like I got to try and explore it. And I feel like it's going to mess up other sails a bit, other patterns. Um, so gotta be careful about that. Because I think there are some that maybe we're gonna have like a big sail up there, and I don't want this to kinda interfere in a really weird way. Um, and is this even kinda like does it make sense what I'm looking at? You know, I don't think it's very clear that this is just like a big bunch of kinda like sails coming into the side of a balloon. Don't know if that works. Or like why that would even exist. So I might scratch that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a ghost fish. Yeah, kinda. Hmm. Yeah, just some like just gaping holes where it's like, uh that should not float. It's torn to shreds. Actually, I, I like that more. I think I think that's the route I would go. Like technically, 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 technically. Um, what I should do for the sails is just yeah, like front load it and like try and shove some on the top even. So let's let's do this. Keep that same. That's expected there, so I'll put that there. All right. So do this. Have like another one catching even more wind. So why not? But then yeah, I want I want like even more. I don't know why I'm obsessed with putting so many sails onto this ship, but I guess that's something that I want. It's 
So it's like this would be on the sail layer. So like the balloon would come out in front of this. So as long as there isn't like a unicorn balloon, which I'm sure eventually we might have that, that could work. I'm going to scratch that. Not quite working well enough for me. I think that the, the like multi sale at the front is at least a step in that direction that I want. Yay. Make this one even bigger then. need to account for all the other potential balloon designs. Uh, make sure that this will kind of like at least kind of attach in an appropriate way. If I look at where the base balloon is, it's got to at least kind of connect there. Um, Yeah, I can't. I can't just turn it into a ship. Um, I wish that I could. Like, just suddenly, it's like got this big mast and kind of like huge kind of sails coming off of it, and that'd look really cool. However, the way that the system works and it's built, um, there needs to be this balloon as a top surface, and it needs to kind of like cover very particular places because if we look at for example the pirate sails um, this part of it has to kind of like overlap behind the balloon um, and kind of like that needs to get covered by the balloon in a, in a specific way and so maybe maybe we could figure out how it would overlap exactly in the right places and get away with it, but that's risky. Especially if we have kind of the sails doing all kinds of different crazy stuff, like if there is kind of like a big, you know, shark fin coming off of it for a different design, or like cat ears, although I'd probably have, you know, something like cat ears or like a unicorn horn coming off of the balloon itself, that would probably be the best way to handle that. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a little too uh, difficult to make work universally if I were to kind of like give it an actual kind of ship hull. As cool as it would be to have like the full on ghost ship, I just think it, it's a little bit can't quite pull that off, unfortunately. So I'm going to have that rope go further than it needs to. Alright. Again, this is just sketch layer, we can kind of push and pull everything. Um, so, yeah, all right. Yeah, green, green, like, fuzzy cloud behind the whole thing, a little bit of a green glow. What I'm thinking might be interesting now, would we do a green glow, that kind of like ghostly fog coming off of it, on each of the layers independently? So what I'm thinking is if we did that, 
there could be this weird kind of like cutout effect that happens from like the balloon on top of the sail. That said, it might not actually be a bad thing. It might look good to have them kind of like cleanly, you know, uh, just sticking out in front. Um, so we'll, we'll experiment with that. Ultimately, it could come down to the hull, which is the bottom layer of the, the set of the three layers. If that one just has that kind of green haze around where all the other parts are, maybe that'll work, but it's a little bit iffy when it comes to the sail because different sails are gonna have different shapes and you know, like one of the designs, maybe we'll just have a cattail flowing off of the back instead of a full on sail, in which case, uh, you know, would there just be this big weird blob of green kind of coming off the back and that doesn't work. Um, so, I'm going to try and make it work per piece. So the balloon will have its own green. The the uh, the hull will be the easiest one, because that one isn't on top of any, anything else. And then the sails would have their own, which I think would be OK. I think it's just more of a, I'll make sure it fades away enough so that no matter what it's attached to, it should still should still work. So I haven't really done anything with the, the balloon yet, so I'm going to work on that now. So I'm thinking, okay, so this is this is like a haunted version of the dirigible, not not the ghost ship specifically. But I like the idea of there just being these kind of like massive just there's no way this should be flying because it just is torn right open. Um, So clearly, this would not not pass for getting that that license that uh, everyone had to get. Does not pass inspection. Yeah, just massive hole right right in center of it, and just kind of cannon shots. It's like the uh, the pirate hull, or the pirate balloon. Um, it has like a bunch of really cool looking battle damage, but it's all patched up. This is this is the, the, the pirate ship that did not manage to uh, take care of its issues. Oh yeah, that's where the, the green mist should be like billowing out like that. And that's okay that it goes on top of everything else too. That's a neat idea. And then it, it I think that even if it does kind of like cover over different sails and holes, that still works because there's just like this magical ooze, uh, 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 like basically just cluster of kind of like ghostly ectoplasm cloud or mist or something that holds it together in a sense. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, with it oozing out, it's pretty neat. And again, we're not going for pretty. It's it's a Halloween design, you know. It's okay to make it kind of like creepy and weird. Like Ugh. Again, like I want it to be really fun and exciting and cool, but like also like maybe I don't want to have this as my main design that I I show off all the time because it's not necessarily the most pretty and and uh, make me look cool. <laughs> Instead, I'm just polluting the skies with ectoplasm. I, I enjoy kind of like putting ropes and stuff all over these balloons and kind of weird configurations. The more kind of ridiculous and haphazard, the better. Okay, so I'm feeling like this is going in a good direction now. I think that's starting to kind of like work for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna do really cute and like, oh, that that's so pretty and lovely and I love it. 
Um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, uh, Valentine's be such a nice time to do just like a, an adorable love boat or something like that. Um, Great Winter Hunt, I, I feel like we'll probably have something pretty fun and exciting for that too. Just, <laughs> it's just a Santa's sleigh or something like that. But it's like flying as a giant brick of ice. Why not? Great winter. Um, yeah, so I like this this kind of like feeling of it being um, deflated. So I'm going to make it more droopy. So normally the balloons kind of only come down to here. But for this one, I'm going to make it kind of like sag down all the way down to here. So maybe there's a hole that like has stuff going all the way up here and it'll just kind of like flop over top of that. So I think that's okay. Um, and then I'm going to make the middle go up as high as I can, which is just here. It's basically where it was, I think. Um, Sweet. All right, I'm liking this. I think that's working. And then uh, to really emphasize kind of the deflated feeling, if I like really raise up that balloon there, hopefully that won't mess with other designs too much. But now you can really kind of see this kind of like <sighs> kind of melting effect going on, and that's pretty decent for. Uh, Getting that to feel like it's just losing all of its kind of gas. Make sure I don't kind of mess up that hole. Okay, so then there's that rope just kind of draped over the center of it, I guess. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we could add a patch or two on it. You miss Carl? I mean, he does return every year. It's just a not not a very friendly return. He uh, he has some vengeance issues. In case you were unaware, Carl's a zombie. It's not just really good makeup he wears when he kind of shows up. His, uh, he ships raised from the sea by something. And uh, we did sink Carl's cruise. Some time back. Cursed cruise. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, I think one of the event illustrations that I did was Carl wearing zombie makeup. We have very few uh, NPCs in the game, and I, I had uh, turned one of them into a monster. Because it's fun. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I feel like this is, uh, it's not a direct pull on the ghost ship's design. Um, Gonna darken that. But it certainly feels pretty haunted, you know. The uh, the crew on this ship might not be uh, doing so hot. 
There you go. This is this is the the, the design you you like take flight with when you go uh, to take on your high altitude dragons. Just like I accept my fate. Equip this. May Carl protect me. Need more NPCs. I totally agree. Um, that's actually something that the team uh, we've discussed, and we are kind of looking at how we can do that. Um, we all are definitely on board with kind of bringing in more NPC potential. Um, one of the things that I'd be curious to, to see what you would think is um, each of the shops kind of like have their their own kind of like purposes and stuff and a few of them kind of have like some potential mainstay characters obviously we have mustachio for the charms um, he kind of like is the the creator of the charm shop in a sense and um, there's kind of like the cartographers and the trap smiths and stuff um, would it make sense to you guys if we had kind of like a character for those shops that kind of follows you around like Larry or should, you know, like, and, and you know, part of this would be like, well, would we want to have kind of like when you visit a shop, you have this, you know, like character that shows up in the top and says hi, kind of like when you, um, when you have Big Jack, uh, she, she's kind of like, visible in there and you know it's her shop um, and that's kind of like something that I absolutely loved that we, we got to do um, so I'm wondering like what if you know the cartographer had that but it was like would it be weird if it was always the same cartographer that goes to each location with you um, yeah exactly a, cock, a, a character in every shop uh, would be a bit much especially if it was like a unique character per region, that would be way too much. Um, yeah, Plank Run is is definitely um, missing in action. Still, he is there. They are still like a character of the universe, but uh, uh, you know, like we haven't heard from from them for a little while. Uh, last journal that we got, they were basically captured inside the rift. Um, so, got to do some more exploration on that on our end, I think. You know, develop that a bit more. Um, I know, uh, actually, uh, Norman was interested in kind of helping me do some writing with that, which I'm excited about. Because uh, as, as many ideas as I have for kind of what's actually going on in the, the, the universe and, and lore and that kind of fun stuff, I'm not necessarily good at kind of like figuring out how to kind of like lay that out and kind of like prepare all that and get that kind of written and, and put down. Um, I know that Norman's actually done quite a bit of writing in the past, so he's, he's got some chops in that, so it'd be pretty cool to get his, uh, his kind of expertise on some of that and a little assistance and definitely going to be kind of poking other devs to kind of like try and you know, like, do a little more work on, on all this, because uh, I think it's super rewarding and fun to have more world lore and stuff, and, like, it doesn't need to affect the gameplay, um, which is partially why it can often fall on the wayside, because we're, we're so busy trying to make sure we have the uh, gameplay experience down for you guys that we kind of, like, are like, well, it'd be nice to get around to doing lore stuff, but... Uh, we're not as kind of, you know, making sure we're hitting those beats. Um, so it'd be it'd be cool to try and push that a little bit further um, if we can find the right way to do that. So I think a lot of people quite enjoy the the experience that it can add to a, a game like this, especially such like it, it's like an insanely rich universe that this project has where each character has their own little you know story lore um, uh, you know a lot of it's very kind of like silly and light but you know if you start kind of like looking at everything and tying it all together there's some some like interesting kind of implications about what the world is and how it all works together which 
I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think we could really push that further. And I feel like we owe it to you guys to do that even. Um, I know that I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. I'm just bad at it is the thing. I'm a bad, I'm bad at writing. <laughs> so I just have jot notes and I need to kind of make more sense of them. Be able to kind of develop it. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Getting pointless collectibles was fun. <laughs> More in the library would be kind of a neat way to handle that. I can't answer that, Alex Claxton. But uh, thematically, the the mice are an outside force, kind of aggressively taking over. Uh, Nania and and terrorizing the Desians within, although most of them seem to be hunters. Um, but no, like in in the actual kind of uh, idea behind it, you know, you are a special group um, protecting the the world um, from these very very dangerous uh, creatures, and it. A lot of the times we do end up kind of like diving into their strongholds and, and attacking them there. But that's just kind of what you have to do. Of course, it doesn't help any when we draw like extremely adorable and cute characters that are just. <laughs> aww. Uh, which is why, you know, like when the game first kind of like was being created, I had a lot more kind of like very vicious traps, um, and I very kind of quickly went away from, from that kind of like over the top, kind of like, it, it made me actually kind of uncomfortable to make it, you know, like, uh, that kind of, you know, nasty and gruesome, you know, I, I really, I made a couple of, you know, early traps before I even knew what the game was, and then I was like, uh... I don't like that, you know. Uh, the, there is the whole nonviolent mouse removal charity. Uh, I think that was the name of it, the NVMRC, something like that. Um, and so I ended up making traps uh, way back when um, to kind of like promote the hey, let's use traps that are, you know, humane. And I liked that a lot. Uh, so. Basically, from those points on, I always made sure that the trap designs were a little more vague and that, you know, you get to kind of, like, uh, create your own sense of how a mouse is caught um, and it's not kind of, you know, this terrible thing, hopefully. <laughs> I know that um, glue traps are actually realistically awful, um, so it's kind of like, ugh. But that's why I made like the design of it the most ineffective kind of like thing ever. It's not actually good glue. They just like eat it and get sleepy because it's got too many carbs or something. Um. <laughs> yeah, NVMRC would like a word with me. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, that, that's kind of one of the elements of it. It's like, uh, actually, I had um, three pet rats uh, when I was in college, so before. And I, I believe they were around while I was working on this, that's a little bit. Um, let's see, when was that? It's a while back, but I had three rats. They were awesome. I loved them. They would, like, had, uh, had this kind of, like, hoodie that um, was like very fluffy and they love to just kind of like sit on my shoulders and like sit in the hood of it and just kind of hang out um, or like crawl through the sleeves and stuff but yeah so I, I quite love mice and rats and all them they're adorable and very like rats especially not not that we're talking about rats you know, it's a game about mice why do they look like rats um, they're very sociable and very friendly, uh, at least domesticated ones. I wouldn't want to uh, 
be hanging out with uh, just kind of wild rats. Probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, so I, I, I quite like them. Guinea pigs, oh, they're so cute, and the noises they make are so good, so adorable. Yeah, rats are quite quite a bit more friendly than mice, I believe. Um, they actually like so the rats that I had. Um, they were brothers, uh, three brothers. I named them Big Wedge and Sid. Um, and uh, they they kind of like they lived um, three and a bit years, which is pretty standard, I think, for rats. Um, might be might be wrong about that stat. I'm not totally confident uh, that I was the greatest, uh, you know, rat dad. Um, but but basically, um, yeah, very smart. They are very smart. Um, but yeah, very short lives. But uh, when when they like um, Sid started to kind of like, you know, uh, get get sick and more lethargic and you know was clearly kind of, you know. Um, not doing as well, um, it you could tell how much it affected the other two, and you know after he passed, the other ones like just kind of like were basically depressed, and you know it didn't take very much longer after before you know they also passed, and it's just kind of like it's very sad, <laughs> but yeah they they literally like were just they loved each other so much that you know they. You could tell, you know. So, anyways, I don't know why I'm off on that tangent. Now I'm sad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rat Dad Jacob. I've got feeling there's already a Discord emoji of that. You know. Okay. You know what? You might be right. That's funny. Um, yeah. Anywho. <laughs> So just in case anyone was like, Jacob must hate, you know, mice to to create the things he does. No, I think they're wonderful. So there's that. I guess that's what I was going for with that whole tangent. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to do the thing where you like just ramble while doing an art stream. So it just kind of goes places, and I don't really plan and try and make it go in any particular direction. I just try to speak so that it's not dead air. Um, but speaking of dead air, look at this thing. That thing should not be flying. It looks like it's plummeting out of the sky even. Just if I make the kind of like the tendrils kind of just like, you know, kind of coming off of it like this is just like dropping heavy. All right. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this sketch, actually. I feel like... <laughs> yeah. Little, little guinea pig squeaking. That is a very happy thought. Thank you. Um, yeah. Alright. Yeah, it does kind of have a bit of a watercolorish look. Um, so that's thanks to this very nice smudge brush that I got from... Uh, uh, Sam Nielsen, who is basically someone who taught me about light uh, in a very effective manner. Um, but yeah, basically he was kind of doing demos and stuff, and he would use this this smudge brush that, um, uh, and I was like, I need this this brush. It's very good because like the default Photoshop smudge tool is terrible. It's so bad. Uh, but yeah, so I made sure to to get a hold of this thing, and it's it's amazing because I can just kind of like be like, oh, I want to darken this area. Cool, good enough. All right, grab this, smush it around. Nice, it's blended nicely, and then I can kind of like feather the edge and like really make a nice soft transition. It's so easy. Digital art, people. Oh yeah, save. I should do that. There we go. Alright. 
ghost ship. Actually, I'll start with the original. I wanted to finish that with lollipop, but that'll come later probably. I don't know if we'll do an, like a second skin for this event. Um, it, it might depend on how we want to dole out rewards. It might make sense for us to just keep it to one right now. Um, but yeah, even if we uh, do a second one, I don't know if it'll be on stream. Maybe I'm just going to make a little more variation between the spacing on that to make it more interesting. So it was too even before. All right, so. All right, thanks for hanging out, Alex. Enjoy your meeting. Um, yeah, all right, let's see. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I, I, I like that you enjoy my ramblings. Uh, kind of keeps the stream alive while you have to do other things. And lets you know if I'm like trying something ridiculous so you can kind of like look over when I make a mess of things. You don't want to miss it, right? Uh, all right, so I feel like, what do you guys think of these front sails? Just kind of kind of work, maybe. Um, let's see. I'll get a couple extra like planks on the hull. Make it look really kind of shredded up and cracked. I think the rendering is going to be a big part of making this work because um, I have this as reference, um, and you know, like being able to see how it layers up is a big deal. I think, um, and then this is going to probably be more of the kind of like color range. Um, I kind of like the darker, more muted colors with a little bit more of a um, vibrant kind of. Um, gassy glow coming off of it. So uh, I like the idea of having little kind of like um, fires just kind of like burning on the kind of edges of things like, you know, purposeful lanterns or something like that, but with green, green smoke kind of billowing out or something like that. Um, hmm, should look more deflated on the bottom. Maybe. It's hard to do because I have to maintain that shape. And then if I go too much droopier, it might mess with other hulls. I could try the pirate hull just to see what that would do. I think it'd be okay with that. It would droop over the back of that, which isn't bad. All right, let's try that. Let's, let's make it just a little more, a little more droopy. So I, I, I do love how much we could exaggerate this to like really get that feeling. And like maybe if this is just kind of wool, just melting, that might help. That's pretty extreme compared to where the other balloons are in terms of kind of actual shape of it. So that might be fine. And then I think the tops of these I could even kind of flatten out a bit more. So it's kind of just like really just kind of bleh. maybe even like droop it in a little bit. That might be okay. I just need to make sure that yeah it's it's so high compared to the other balloons so that definitely has room to play around with that silhouette. All right. So I need to make sure I at least come out that far. That's OK. But this could just kind of pull in there. Yeah, now it's like really just kind of like expelling gas. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because um, with the dirigible being very small and it's kind of like where it's displayed, having the hole this huge will make it so you can still see it. Um, and that's, I think, pretty key to getting this 
to look good. I'll have that kind of flap off to the side more though. So I want that kind of rope and edge of the silhouette of the balloon to kind of pull in a bit more visibly. This, that's the edge of the balloon there. So I need to make sure to at least have it kind of come out that far. Which I have it come up a bit there. That's fine. I think that hole right there interferes a little too much with the rope to be able to kind of show off how much that rope is kind of digging into it. There we go. So now you can kind of really see it just kind of pulling in on that balloon. And then I could just kind of maybe even have the um, I could probably tear a hole in it here and it shouldn't interfere with any of the other sails. I kind of like the idea of this cutting through the silhouette aggressively. Um, so it needs to cover the balloon there. But now you can really see that there's just no way that's not just completely losing all of the gas. The ghost gas. I think that works. All right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna get some extra light on this edge here, and that I'll just want to have that read a little better. When I actually come to the rendering, I don't think that'll be an issue. Cool. All right. I think that's fine. So this is droopier. All right. I think that's looking good. Um, we have 20 minutes before I go on lunch, so I think we have enough time to block in the silhouette because um, it's fairly simple. And then uh, I kind of want to have like just a rope. I can get rid of that if I don't like it. But so that's a it's such a like messed up balloon. It'll be funny having someone with like the like the, the pristine kind of like looking holes and sails and then just this balloon slapped into the middle of it. <laughs> ghost gas. <laughs> it's just a ghost is just haunting someone by leaving its ghost gas. Horrible. Horrible. Okay, so let's do the silhouettes. So this one we're actually going to go into the proper layer for the uh, file. I'll drop the sketch down. I can hide the balloon now. Um, and then, let's see, I'm going to use just kind of a really neutral 
screen to start. This is kind of going to set us up with um, not that layer. There we go. So I'll start with the balloon. So this is setting up the, the base of the kind of shape. And I'll do all my rendering using this kind of silhouette that I create. Until I do kind of like the special effect of like the gas kind of you know, floating around it, that'll need to be on a different layer. Yeah, we could add some rips and tears to the front sail. That's fair. It is a little more pristine compared to everything else. Um, I think we can kind of do that as we render it. I think that'll be just as easy. I think we'll notice if it if, if it doesn't have that kind of feeling too. Um, if it looks a little too pristine versus everything else, we'll probably quickly realize that that should probably fall in line with everything else. So. There's a rope flying off there. So. The balloon itself needs to be just this part. I can't render out the sails or the hull or the, the ropes, um, aside from what's attached to the balloon, just because of how the, the layers of the files are used to display your ship. That's probably... Pretty good. Awesome. All right. So that's the base of the balloon, the silhouette of it. Um, we're going to do the hull. So this one, I'll just use a, a slightly darker color, just so that I'll be able to notice where things are over overlapping see that it's just slightly different. Of course I'll over I'll paint over all of this in the end anyway, so the color does not matter right now. Um, it's good to get kind of a, a relatively you know decent idea of the color though. Uh, the local kind of color for it, it'll make it a little easier to kind of render everything else without having to kind of come back and make sure that you know it's not hot pink because that'll just kind of throw everything else off if I'm trying to render a nice looking set of ghost sails and the hull is just hot pink it's going to be a little too distracting and throw off everything else so This one I might do uh, the silhouette in multiple layers. Like the ropes, I could see those being a different layer. Maybe the under kind of like underhull here, because it's kind of like there's there's different sheets of uh, kind of pieces of ship that are kind of like stacked on top of each other. But I think for now I'll just use one layer. And then I'll I'll kind of like clip other layers into it, um, and we'll see if that works well enough. Do some layer masking, uh, and it's also important to be able to kind of look at this without the sketch revealing stuff and ask ourselves, does this actually make sense? Can I tell what this is just from the silhouette? Especially because it's something that is so small that all that detail is probably just going to get lost uh, when you're kind of viewing it. Alright, 
So then I'll do one more layer below this just for the ropes. Makes it a little easier to manage those. There's probably one there, one there. Um, all right, so now if I hide the sketch, it's maybe not the absolute clearest uh, what it is. So I might play with that a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think once the sail portion is in uh, and you have the context of what it's supposed to be, it's maybe not that bad. But I think, I think we clean up a little bit of the design to kind of make that work a bit better. <laughs> oh, I see. Making the sail more droopy. I see. Yeah, could try that out. That one maybe I would try to do with the uh, with the sketch. This might be harder to do that than just the silhouette. Um, so let's see. Let's bring the sketch back up. No, droopy, you say. Um, I don't know, I wonder. I feel like, okay, so these are catching wind and kind of inflating due to that. This is like basically a stabilizing rudder. So it'd be kind of like the wind passing this way and kind of like catching it and pulling it back. Or it probably more so has kind of like structure to keep it rigid so that it prevents, you know, it from spinning out kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, if it's just kind of like sitting in the sky and it's kind of so shredded, I could see bits kind of just like dripping off of it almost. Um, Uh, that's an interesting question. Why are some cheese in the shop and why are some crafted? What's the philosophy for either one? Um, so it's it's partially just due to what time that cheese was in the game or added to the game rather. Um, so many years back we kind of like introduced kind of the crafting system and made that kind of like uh, crucial to gameplay in certain areas before we like really figured out how to do kind of like cool and exciting HUDs and gameplay through that. Um, and it's it's a system that like works in some areas. Uh, it's especially interesting like when you get to like craft a trap or something like that that's a hidden thing. Um, but one of the things that we did realize is kind of like the added complexity and frustration of having to craft your cheese by like having to go and collect, you know, uh, coconut curds or whatever and, and like have enough of each of those ingredients and then like click through, you know, X number of interfaces to then be able to craft a certain number of cheese and you just have to keep repeating that every once in a while. Um, and that, that was kind of like, it's, it's interesting, but it's not fun necessarily. Um, and so we basically tried a couple of variations on, on how to handle those things. Obviously making it craftable through the HUD was a big improvement, but we also still disliked having to like, oh, I gotta go get more ionized curd, I guess. Okay. Um, and those elements, whereas kind of like making it a shop purchase because at the same point at a certain point the way we found it was the most enjoyable and just the best experience was basically through just kind of like you click and it happens and you don't need to like have to go and buy all these little random things to make sure you can make x number of cheese like a lot of the areas that had that i would just go and buy like eight thousand of that ingredient and then just i guess whenever that runs out i'll just go and get more of them um so at a certain point, they're literally the same thing. You don't actually go to the crafting 
table and pull up the recipe and you know like manually craft the pieces you click a button and craft as long as you have all the ingredients um, and it just it felt better to cut out more of those kind of like frustrating annoying little things when you're basically doing the exact same action and so by kind of making it a shop element it made it much easier for people to discover and understand what was going on with it and how to use it how to interact with it um, and so that was kind of like just benefit for the player experience um, and so basically wherever uh, you're doing an action a fair amount personally I push for the making it a shop thing um, that way it's much easier to kind of manage um, and kind of like just smoother user experience but yeah, in some cases, like the craft button on the HUD and the buy button on the HUD do the exact same thing. Um, it just depends on if we have it displayed inside the shop or not. And I prefer to have it displayed inside the shop because there's so much more understanding as to kind of like, how do I get this? How do I, you know, what do I need for it? And uh, it's, it's less like I need to go to uh, the... Uh, that random island to pick up enough curd to make a big batch of this, I guess, um, and then have to kind of like do that every once in a while, as opposed to just kind of like, here's a gold cost and you need these ingredients, which are just resource drops from what you're doing already. It's just that I think a better experience to kind of do it that way. And so the languaging hasn't always been the most consistent, um, but yeah. We just try to match what the shop and kind of uh, flow is, make that make sense. I don't know, I'm not feeling the droopy sale. I didn't really experiment that much with it, but I feel like if I make it all droopy, it's a little too droopy. If I just make that like sag, and these like, bleh, like it's just gonna be like this dead looking chip that, I don't know, I want it to be a little bit cooler. Um, so I think I'll I'll just keep the sale as is, um, and then that also kind of maybe makes the the balloon feel even more deflated by comparison. Um, so I guess that's that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So the <laughs> physics expert here it sounds good. I imagine some of the structure could be broken, allowing it to droop a bit. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. I think the um, the pirate sale has a little bit of that going on. Um, yeah, that's that's actually something that I would have uh, like been like, hey, can we just do it this way, where um, it's basically you know still crafting, but when you don't have the ingredients, it just auto bought it for you. But that was a lot more complicated to do. But in some areas, that would be pretty nice to, to add. Um, rips in the sales. There's there's some rips. These ones, these ones are the ones you're talking about. I'm just gonna put a big tear in that. Have some strands coming off of it. Just put a big hole in that. There we go. There's some rips. I don't want to go too crazy with it. It's important to kind of have a little balance. Um, that should be okay. All right. Yeah, that's that's another thing is if it's like a cheese that you carry from one area to another, it kind of makes sense for it to be craftable. Um, partially so you can kind of like, you know, um, manage it in different areas at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm going to make the back sail ghost looking. Unless you have a particular uh, way to do that, that I might not quite capture. Um, let's see, I'm going to make this lighter. Again, just so that I have a difference between the layers. So let's just block this in. I have five minutes before I should go on lunch, so I should probably just finish silhouetting this and then 
we can come back to this with fresh eyes. And some fresh loot from Larry. Um, so I'll just lock this in. That'll make it much nicer to like come back and start rendering right away, or know that we want to do some little tweaks here and there. Let's see if I can whip out this in five minutes. Actually, I should make sure that that bottom one is going to line up here instead. Just in case other hulls do some funny business. There, make that connect there. That's good. Cool. It's nice not getting blinded by the sun anymore. do need to clean up the left side pretty severely. It's just a big blobby mess. Which, to be fair, I think I'll actually have it kind of like get a bit fuzzy and, and kind of like become more like the smoke that's spilling out of the balloon. Which that, that maybe is that kind of like ghostly feeling. I'll just use a hard edge silhouette. be kind of interesting to see kind of floating up and down because uh, Andrew and Parm added that little kind of like hovering animation and these little bits won't have any trailing. Um, it would look absolutely phenomenal if, if there was this kind of like extra layer of just kind of like little bits that kind of like were delayed. So like these little kind of hunks of the ship here and like these little strands and even the, the smog coming off of it, if those were like slightly behind, that would look so good, but it'd be so much more effort to kind of like add that in and we need like six layers per dirigible design and that's just not not something that would make sense to do. But just picturing it like that, I'm like, ah, oh, that'd be so cool looking. But that's not what we're going to do. Cool. All right. I also need to make sure these seal uh, sail ropes go behind the balloon far enough because this balloon sticks out way further than any of the others. And it's definitely when you're doing um, a system where there's kind of layers that interact, you need to make sure to overpaint so that if things are kind of off by a little bit, you don't get weird kind of gaps between the stuff. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm like worrying about the shape, but no one should ever see that. Hopefully. Maybe there'd be like weird loading when you're kind of first seeing these images. Uh, or your browser is first loading these images and it, you know, loads the sails before it does the balloon for like a split second and you get to see 
these kind of ropes just to float in there, attached to nothing. Just making them a little bit thinner. I was thinking it could be neat if they were like weird ghost hands and stuff, but at the same time, uh, the way that I've kind of like set up the hull, not really going to get to see that. Um, so I wouldn't bother, especially if the size is going to actually be viewed out. I think all that's going to disappear. All right. So we are at 1 o'clock. It's time for lunch. I have the silhouette. Um, and you know what? I actually think that reads. I think we've accomplished what we need to for having a kind of relatively clean <laughs> silhouette. I think the, the hull is a little bit kind of like weirdly balanced. Um, and again, without knowing what it is, maybe it's a little more confusing to look at. But I don't think it's bad. It's certainly better than other like character silhouettes I've just let slip by in the past and you know let's see I think maybe if I kind of create a little more shape control by introducing kind of like little gaps I might might help with the understanding of what it should be viewed as. We can mess with that after lunch anyways. Probably a good idea to get a good kind of fresh view of it. So I'll step away from this for an hour. I'm going to take a full lunch. Um, and I think that'll be kind of nice because uh, I'm not under the time constraints I have been for other um, streams where it's like, oh, I got to get this in by like 3 o'clock or whatever. So. We can kind of take our time, enjoy the rendering process, and just kind of, you know, make this look perfect. Um, so, with that, I should definitely do the lunch thing. And I'll give it a save. And it's saved. Um, and I'll put up a, a timer so you guys will know when I will return exactly. And we can resume and have delicious Larry Lutes. Uh, so, until then, I shall enjoy some food. All right, I'll see you guys in an hour.
Him. Hello? 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 And we're back. Welcome back. Lunch is done. It has been an hour. Hello, hello, hello. I, uh, before I went on lunch, was, was thinking about, like, spicy pork bone soup, because I've not had that in a long time, so... I was kind of craving that, um, so I ended up making just uh, some, like, kimchi ramen stuff. It was okay. Not as good, though. But it was okay. Um, so, all right. I have a Larry link to share with you all. So, I'll pop that in the chat right now. Um, and if anyone's watching this recorded, uh, I'm going to put it up on my art page after the stream, um, so you can find it there. Because uh, I'm probably going to post this this piece, and I'll have the, the link in there. It's a good one, too. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll, I'll upload the the ones that were done in the Discord of, of my lovely face plastered all over the, uh, the dirigible, and I'll leave it up to the team to implement that. <laughs> Might be a little bit of that uh, uh, soon, yeah. I, I think that's probably a little bit of the reasoning behind that little gift. Um, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. All right, so we have our silhouette. Um, turning off the sketch. Let's give it a flip too. We haven't done that. Uh, taking a look. Monday. Yeah, they're just a little strong. Wow, computer, you're not having a good time. Hmm. Good thing I saved. <gasps> there we go. All right, so. Looking at it from this direction, I actually feel pretty good about that. It's certainly shredded and tattered, um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's pretty clear. I don't think we really need to play around with the, uh, the silhouette. I feel like it's a pretty decent read. I maybe match the. Um, the sail, the front sail, to kind of have a little bit more of that kind of shredded feeling. Not that you'll be able to see any of that detail when it's shrunk down to its proper size, but I think that might be a good thing to just make sure that that feels like it's similar material. So that's good. Happy with that. Alright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the uh, the hunter that's flying this uh, uses their bottled wind a little too excessively, huh? Just uh, erupting out the back of the ship. I mean, I suppose with the giant hole in the side, that's uh, also kind of just expelling, expelling the gas. Not, not intended to be such level of uh, humor, but I get what you're putting down. All right, so how are we feeling about this? I think I'm pretty good to go forward with it. I think I'll I'll start to render out uh, the hull to start. Let's say just. Picking one and going with it. Alright, so the ropes I'll leave right now. Um, I haven't decided if I want some of the rope to come out in front or stay behind everything. Um, but what I'll do is I'll use this layer above and I'm gonna kind of connect it into it. I forget what that's called. It's just, I always forget what that's called. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna start to kind of go a little more eerie green. I want to kind of bring in this palette a little more so, so I'm going to actually jump over with my color grab 
That's way more green. So let's see if that looks okay dropping that down. So I think what I'll do is I'll kind of create a bit of a gradient from the center out for, for this to start. Um, and then I'm going to erase away areas. Uh, we'll see if that's kind of a cool way to try this. So I'm going to smooth that gradient out a little bit more, make it a little bit more kind of centralized. So there's just more kind of clarity on on that being kind of this this kind of I don't know, gradient. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, you guys. Um, I can use my smudge brush to like get that extra extra smooth transition. So I kind of like that gradient there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into, um, I'm going to give it a clipping mask. And this will let me kind of erase, um, but then also bring it back without kind of actually having to repaint it in. So that'll just kind of make it easier to experiment with, with this technique that I am just making up on the fly. All right, so I'm going to have basically uh, parts of the hole kind of sticking out, and those parts have this gradient over top. And then the rest, I'm going to erase away or hide using a mask just so that there's a nice kind of clear front and back layer. We can also use this to do kind of little details, um, like these windows here. And what's kind of cool about that is um, as it kind of goes towards the outer edge, where the gradient is weaker, it actually kind of like starts to blend in with everything else there. So it has high contrast in the center of it, and then the contrast falls off towards the edges, which just has a nice little kind of effect for creating some visual interest and balance. Um, and then I can do things like add little kind of cracks and just kind of wood grain looking stuff. Um, and it's very easy for me to just kind of change my mind about something and like, oh, maybe I want to have this extend down a little bit more. I just Basically what I'm doing is I'm using this mask layer over here on the right that's attached to this gradient that I made. And I'm just painting black and white into it. And where it's painted black, it just hides everything of that layer, which is clipped down to the base silhouette that I created. So it's all touching that. Um, and then if I want to kind of reveal stuff, I just paint white into it. and that will kind of uh, hide that mask and kind of bring it back. So I figure this would be a, a useful way to kind of like push and pull and see what works and doesn't. They're messing up that kind of gradient, which would be hard to repaint manually after the fact especially if it's just for like a little sliver here and there. Yeah, I like how at the edge it almost doesn't matter if it's masked off or not because the gradient just kind of disappears. That's kind of a cool looking effect I think. I think. Um, so far not bad. I think that's working feels like there's some dimension in it now.
And of course, we'll like add other layers onto this. Um, I think that we'll maybe have kind of like those kind of glowing uh, torches that I mentioned, having these kind of like eerie green flames. And then like these windows, I think, would also look cool if they have kind of that green glow. Um, and maybe we'll add another kind of layer in between these two for kind of the middle uh, ground between these kind of floating planks and uh, whatever the hull is inside. So maybe like the kind of uh, ribbing structural kind of planks, that kind of stuff. That actually the ship looks like on the inside. So let's try that out. We'll put a new layer there. Let's grab this kind of darker green. Should be lighter than the inside hull part. And so we're just kind of exposing the skeletal structure of it, I suppose. doesn't totally work everywhere because you kind of see it coming through um, because the this layer right here is quite uh, quite translucent so I need to kind of erase back a bit which is fine because I don't think I'm gonna worry about adding a whole lot of specific detail to this it should be kind of hidden mostly in the shadows so it's kind of hard to see it and if there's any kind of like shadow cast by these pieces of kind of plank and stuff then it's okay that it just completely vanishes like right here but then now maybe I'll come in with like a little bit more uh, light and just try and kind of expose a little bit more make some of it pop out so that there's a nice kind of clear amount of kind of like, oh, this is like outer shell and this is kind of inner guts of the ship and then there's still kind of more deeper in but you can't quite see that, it's all in shadow. no ship right so I do not know what the inside of this should actually look like. Just kind of make it up as I go, which is a, a lot of what my job is. Alright, and then I'm going to do one more layer on top of all these and this can be just kind of more finer details that I want to just kind of pop. Well, I, I suppose I'll do more than just one more layer. Um, I suppose I should also be looking at this with the, the sketch turned down quite a bit more so I can see what it actually looks like. So I do not render things with the sketch still visible. So this is kind of going to be more manual pan painting on this layer here. There's the, the one directly below this. I, I like the idea of just keeping it as a clean and simple gradient and then modifying that. Okay, cool. Um, I imagine also I'll 
probably have to kind of like look at this again as I do things like add that kind of like little hazy green glow around everything. If we end up doing that, you know, make sure that everything still looks appropriate together. Um, yeah, you like the wooden plank effect. That's good. I'm glad. I feel like that's kind of one of the the design elements that I, I quite like about this this piece here that I did uh, for last year, I believe. Yeah, just that kind of the base at least has that kind of like old, you know, dried out skeleton feeling wood. And I think that's pretty cool. So maybe I'll add more kind of pitting and, and deep kind of, you know, uh, holes inside of it. Um, so I could actually, maybe I'll go darker. Because if I were to look at this in grayscale, it's it's pretty kind of mid-tone. Um, and I don't want it to go really dark. Because you can go way too extreme very easily if you have like really dark darks and really light lights. Um, so there's definitely a kind of like a proper balance that I want to find. But first, I think I'm going to do it, the darks as just kind of like their own layer, like this. And then it's easy enough to see just how kind of extreme that could be. Um, and I definitely don't want it to go that far, so what I could do is just kind of pull it back, like so, and then erase away where I don't want that effect. So I think I'll come in here, just kind of selectively lighten it up in a couple of spots. And I can also kind of like try to inform the design a bit, implying, oh, hey, maybe there's even more kind of planks and stuff behind all those other things. Um, you know, maybe there's some ambient light kind of coming in from the sky all around, which is kind of you know, lightening up all these deep shadows. Again, it's a bit of a contrast thing. You know, I want to kind of look at this and, and not have it just demand the your attention by having it kind of like be such dark darks on directly on top of such light lights, you know, so even if it would be maybe more realistic to have the deep shadows go extremely dark because there's just no light getting in there. When it comes to kind of like balancing the look of it, I feel like it's pretty important to make sure that your contrast is, is uh, looking nice. So that feels pretty good. I feel like there's enough contrast that I can like look at this and stuff pops. Um, and that's that's more than enough, I think. Um, so for the balloon, I feel like the ghost ships have kind of like a slightly lighter color for their sails versus the, the wood plank. So I'm just going to do this, right? create a new layer. Similar kind of feeling, I think I'll go for with that kind of gradient effect. Um, so I don't want to go too crazy, kind of vibrant, but I still like, you know, want it to have that kind of ghosty glow and stuff. Um, so that's all right. And then let's use this layer for the giant kind of rips and tears into the, the balloon. So I'm just going to create the silhouette of that tear. So I'll just overpaint it. Don't 
typing on the keyboard, Charlie. It's a good way to get kicked off my desk. Alright, so there's a rope that I'm just painting over, and then I'll erase that out of it. That's good enough, I think, for now. Alright, so then I'll just erase this rope. Cool. Alright, so one of the things is this edge here would probably kind of fade away, because this is a, a piece of the kind of the balloon itself that's kind of rolled out as, as it's kind of expelling its gas. The fabric is kind of folded over onto itself, so I feel like it could have a smoother transition. Whereas the other ones are kind of like cut out against the inside. I don't know if that made any sense. Hopefully, visually, it, it kind of comes across. Maybe it doesn't, but we'll see. All right. Um, okay. I think it'll help when I actually start to kind of render a bit more. Um, so, what I could do is the rope. Let's just go with this color for now. I want this to be on a pretty high up layer. And uh, I feel like to get that kind of sagging balloon feel, having the, uh, the rope almost completely obscured by the balloon there is maybe a good indicator that it's kind of just drooping over the edge of it. It's like washes, jowls. Right here. this kind of rip being in front of the rope, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I won't do that. 
I'll decide when I actually render out all the kind of shadows and folds around the balloon. And with this one, I kind of want it to be like just being just covered by the the balloon draping over it. Cool. Okay. It feels like a shelter shell. Maybe I needed this above it below it, rather. That would have made more sense. Then I could have just filled in the hole here. Not sure why I didn't just do it this way. that this would also be the same color there. All right, so we have not fully rendered yet, but the parts of the uh, balloon kind of feeling a little bit more like how they need to. Oh, there was a, a smaller tail tear there. You're right. Thank you. Completely missed it. And then there was also a patch down at the front. Good catch. I probably wouldn't have noticed that. As well just use the same layer to do the patch. Just do this. It's not that the ghosts don't try to keep their ship in, in shape, it's just that they found better ways than just throwing a patch on the side of their sail. A little bit of necromancy goes a long way, apparently. Alright. So now I want to do the shadow. don't need to go crazy with it, but I do need to kind of show these kind of big kind of flaps of fabric. Maybe, uh, maybe instead of using shadow for most of it, maybe I actually just lighten up these parts. Somewhere like that, maybe. Turn off the 
the sketch. With it being so like uh, deflated, I think it would be fun to have kind of lots of kind of wrinkles and folds happening at the edges. Oh yeah, the landing balloon for the trains, you mean? After you get your your good air and loot. Maybe. Yeah, it's a I don't know what inspired that for the uh, the train run, but Basically, yeah, just big kind of floppy balloon looking thing. I feel like that's got some good wrinkling. It does not look like it's, uh, you know, doing the best. It's certainly having a bad time. All right, maybe I'll get a little bit darker shadow for this underside here. Went a little bit warmer for the shadow down here. Just add a little bit more interest. Kind of a little bit warmer even still. Just adds a little variety. Yeah, and that like weird kind of brown on just kind of desaturated green just has a weird kind of like sickly monster feel, which I think is great for this. Just kind of like an unpleasant color scheme in a sense. It's not terrible, but. It's not, not like a healthy looking color.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, due to the environment that it's going to be inside of, I kind of want to have just a little bit more kind of light activated on it than it being its own light source like the uh, the other ghost ships. Um, it's kind of like you took elements of it and, and like made it your own. Uh, but I don't know, it might push it to be a little more kind of, you know, crazy, neon, glowing, vibrant thing. Like, yeah. it's it's very different color scheme-wise, right? It's way more played down. Um, but one thing I want to do is add that green fire to it, I think. Um, and then I think the smoke effect is going to push it even further, too. So I think I want to make it a little more in this realm. Uh, so we can get some pretty strong greens, uh, but selectively so. Like, I don't want to go crazy with it. So I think I might jump down to the hull, actually. And this is kind of the idea that I have for how the more kind of, like, powerful green could look. Where basically these windows back here... could have that kind of, like... A natural glow about them. Um, maybe like, I don't know, actually I like those being in shadow. Yeah, so like, I could really kind of punch these up even more. Let's say, I'll try this. Actually, you know what? Let's let that glow kind of just ooze off of it and kind of like trail behind. Right? We were talking about wanting to do that anyways. So let's just explore that right now. Well, we're kind of in that realm. But like, see how I can kind of just have it like weaving through the deck. I think that's kind of cool. And just have it like spill over like a mist. I don't want to trail it too far out because when this is kind of bobbing up and down on the HUD, it'll look kind of weird for that to kind of like have a long tendril that just kind of is statically with the ship. So if I have it kind of like clinging to the ship a little closer, it might not look too... you might not notice it as much in terms of it looking like it should be acting a different way, I guess. Um, I don't know if any of that made any sense. I say that a lot on stream, don't I? I especially like the idea of just like a, a little selective part having extra glow, especially on kind of the inside structure of this. Just draw some neat attention to this kind of creepy fog kind of spilling off of it. I'm just going to use my wonderful smudge tool to just kind of blend that out and then erase away the plank that I want to kind of sit in front. Cool. All right, and then just to really kind of punch up, just because we can, I'm going to not use the eraser for that. I'm going to use brush to just really kind of crank up the brightness on that. Just a hint of it, like right here. Now it's kind of got like that really unnatural fog kind of creeping off of it. Actually, I think I went a little too far with it. 
on this side over here, so I'm going to knock that back. I'll just let that be that really intense green. Just the slightest hint of the, the bright yellow kind of overexposing it there. But I like that. There's like this, this kind of effect of the fog kind of like bleeding out of the ship or something like that. And that's kind of cool. And then it, it gives that kind of mist we were talking about um, a nice place. But it's also not required to just kind of glow absolutely crazily everywhere. So let's do just a little bit, a bit on, let's so try this cloud brush, it's a bit much, just a bit, let's knock that back a whole bunch. Smudge brush that back up there. I can't have any of it touching the edge of the the file either, the the canvas. Put a hard eraser right on that edge. Make sure it doesn't look too strange. There we go. Okay. So that feels pretty okay. Maybe I'll just give it just a little extra bunch of green right there. And there. Um, I should also test it on uh, a darker background. I thought I had one in this file though. Apparently I do not. Because uh, I must have done it with the the resource, the sky resources dirigible that I designed. Um, I did have kind of like the high altitude backdrop here, and as well just a, a cutout of the, the low altitude backdrop. That's pretty useful to kind of look at. I should have saved it before I flipped it. Alright. Um, taking a quick look at this in grayscale, you can see that the the balloon itself, I feel like that can have a little more definition. Um, that way, no matter what kind of sail it's attached to, it might not you know, lose itself in the sail too easily. Um, I am going to try doing a darker backdrop, because I do want to see what this looks like against kind of more... I don't think that's quite the high altitude sky. But, you know, it's important to be able to see what it looks like against kind of different backdrops. Um, and right now, you can see the fog and everything else just kind of loses itself a little too easily. So what I could do is I could use that fog to help kind of create definition on the edges and fix that silhouette. I should really probably just pull in the actual backdrops though, like I did before. Uh, let's see. That'll make it a lot easier to actually design the image around how it's going to be used, which is pretty darn important. Uh, all right. the browser slices. Here's the backdrops. I'm going to blow this up quite a bit. That's probably good enough for the sky backdrop there. And this one, same deal. Yeah, it's quite dark in comparison. Um, 
Although, yeah, where the dirigible shows up, it's maybe more like that. Yeah, um, there's some pretty big read issue. It's not as bad as just that kind of level of dark. But uh, I think it will be useful to kind of like push and pull the silhouette a little bit more. Make sure that reads nicely. So I can't guarantee exactly what the backdrop looks like behind the balloon. I should probably figure that out and put that in my default image or my template image. But I won't do that on stream, that might take a little bit. So with this, um, what we could do is we could go up with the dark and pop that contrast out a bit more, quite a bit more. And I mean, it's quite, quite contrasty. Uh, it's not helping at the edges though, so it's actually not too helpful, uh, too useful. I suppose the hull isn't really too big an issue. I think it's definitely the sails and the balloon which are sitting precariously, but that should be easy enough to tweak. So this is our shadow layer. And I'll try... Um, let's try a luminosity layer. I don't always use this technique, but it's not a bad one. Basically, a new layer, it's set as luminosity, and then I can just grab the darks and lights that I want to match, and just kind of paint with those, and it'll keep the colors where they are otherwise. That can be quite, quite useful. Um, there's some interesting saturation happening right there. Because it's a new layer, I can just kind of smudge it around and not have to worry about it messing with any of the other elements. And then I can do things like erase. I want there to be a little bit more light. Now, if I look, that definitely reads much nicer. I even go quite a bit darker here. So that's, that's actually probably more where I would want it to be in terms of kind of how, how dark it goes there. Um, that's not bad. I'm glad I did this on its own layer because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, you know, just go as extreme with it because um, it would have messed up the other shading that I had already kind of drawn. So now that, that hole feels like it's pretty well exposed. Um, I'm actually going to lighten up behind here using the same luminosity layer. I'm just painting in a brighter kind of color, and it's just adjusting the, uh, the value for everything below. That's not bad. Add in some little highlights, perhaps.
Cool. All right. Not bad. Another nice big wrinkle there. And probably another one here. And then, let's take a look at it with color. And, whoop, wrong hockey. Okay, so we can see that there's a bit of extreme saturation happening, but I'm not too upset with that. It, again, just adds to that weird, kind of almost gross looking quality about it. It's like some bloated, sickly uh, Frankenstein's monster flesh looking <laughs> colors going on. So that's perfect. Um, I'm actually going to darken the void in here. Let's go cooler with the color too. Should be able to just do that. That's quite dark compared to everything else. So that might be a lot. However, we are doing that kind of like the gas kind of billowing out of it, so that's going to change it quite a bit. I don't think it will remain dark in there anyways, especially if it is spilling out this kind of like bright gas. Maybe it would make more sense if it's glowing from the inside. Uh, but speaking of that gas, let's actually make that happen. So we're going to grab our very vibrant green. Let's grab our cloud brush. It's a nice brush for just kind of creating foggy clouds and other such things. I don't know. So I'm gonna make sure that it's not going too crazy because this this glow is gonna be over top of like every other design that it'll be paired with. So I don't want it to just kinda get in their way. just erase it here because I'm going to have it coming out of the holes there so I'll make that happen on a different layer it's going to be above all the balloon stuff this one's behind it this is just the backdrop kind of silhouette disappear near the sail a little bit more, that's probably good. But then around the top and bottom, I'm going to have it just kind of like really catch the light better. Um, really kind of draw attention to its silhouette there using my occlusion brush. It's just a brush that like has a lot of fall off. It's like very strong in the center, but then it fades out very quickly. So it goes for a long time. It's good for doing kind of deep shadows on stuff, like the corner of a room, um, where like two surfaces are kind of touching each other. Yeah. the light falls off quite quickly or dramatically in some cases, so that's why I like a brush that can do, emulate that. All right. So that's not bad. It certainly has that eerie kind of uh, ghost ship glow going on, which is perfect. Um, I think I'll actually do that around the hull a little bit more. So I feel like that is quite nice for helping it read. So I'm going to do it on a, a new layer so I can have it be nice and intense where I want it. And the hull is the very bottom layer, so it's okay to have it just kind of go all out. 
Oh wait, no, the sales are the very bottom layer, aren't they? I should probably verify that that's the case. Pretty sure the way that I set up this file, it's emulating how it works in game. That would make the most sense, really. So this is going a lot glowier than I was kind of originally thinking it would, but I also don't hate it. So I'll try pulling it back just a smidge. But I definitely like that kind of like the fairy fire kind of glow around the, the silhouette of it to kind of help you see it. I think that's neat looking. And we'll probably just help it to, to work effectively. It's a small, small image, so if I shrink this down, it's a... Uh, Might be a bit hard to read. There's a lot happening, is the problem. All right. So the back sale, I think I'm just going to try and do what I have going, but I'm going to make it more kind of like um, turning into the mist and like falling apart and kind of like, you know, disintegrating. That's kind of how I'm picturing it working. Um, so let's jump on that right now, actually. <clears throat> so we'll start with a similar kind of look to the balloon. They should be made out of kind of, you know, basically the same materials. on the front sail first. I feel like I at least have a good idea of how that should look in the end. Back sail, I'm still kind of... I'll know it when I see it. I think the glow will probably help to provide definition where it's absolutely necessary. Um, I don't know why Dave's feedback videos haven't been saving. I'm not sure. I don't do anything on mine, um, but they do seem to save. Um, I know one of the ones he did, there was like a really weird kind of like, just it, it messed up and it like restarted the stream at a certain point, I think. Um, so that made it so that it only recorded like the last portion of that video, but I have no idea what caused that to happen. Um, so sorry, I don't know. So hopefully this one saves. Yeah, those ropes go a bit darker, so they just kind of stand out a little better. Oh yeah, uh, 
it's possible they were set to the wrong date. Um, if, if you're just searching by the date, maybe we messed that up. That's possible. Sounds like something I would do anyways. No, Dave's usually pretty good for kind of like putting the correct date in the video, though. a different backdrop. Yeah, that's that's the challenge um, with kind of some of the dynamic stuff we've been doing where like there's different kind of environments that things can end up in. You have to kind of plan around all the different possibilities. So the um, the islands themselves was kind of, I had to factor in, uh, you know, like if it had the cheese backdrop, the clouds there, if it's on high or low altitude. Although I guess I did end up making you know, the low version and the high version of the island, so that made that much easier. But then also with the um, the the sky map board itself, the icons, those were on like six different backdrops depending on where it was used, and so I had to like try and make the icon look good in each of those scenarios, and of course each of the icons can have kind of like different states that it's in, if it's like unclaimed or activated or or like the mice have kind of taken over that kind of stuff so it's uh, interesting to try and balance it out because it's like a lot of the elements they were just kind of small and they look like quick little things that I could just kind of crack out really easily but yeah they had a lot of little kind of interesting challenges and complications to them um, so right now I kind of have a bit more of a, uh, like a fan uh, kind of structure in here, like fish tails, kind of the spines are kind of coming out from the balloon, giving it, it that like rigid structure. Um, so I don't know if you guys dislike or like that look, that's just kind of what ended up coming out. But I think yeah, I wanna I wanna make the tail kind of almost vaporize into this ghostly kind of fog, whatever. Um, so I need to do something with the front ones to kind of match that maybe. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one because I didn't know how I was gonna actually render it out. Although, honestly, that's not uncommon for me to work on an image, have no idea what it's going to end up looking like in the end, but, you know, just go for it and see where it takes you. Mm hmm So, yeah, with the darker backdrop, even if it was quite dark, the glow certainly kind of like can help if done well. Uh, maybe. Maybe I just need to kind of like tune up a bit of the, the kind of like the softness at the edges and just kind of sharpen it a bit more. With that said, I don't think any of these will be on that specifically that value of backdrop, um, so it might not be too bad. But if it is displayed more like here, that's not the best. But I'm pretty sure, if I recall, it's kind of more like this, where the balloon actually shows up, something like that. If anyone's on a high altitude, you give me an idea, that would be useful. Yeah, back sail's gonna get gassy. Alright, um, so let's try that on a new layer. Let's see if we can just kind of transition it, make it look not too bad. Actually, it's kind of cool if it goes, like, very bright. 
the edges. Kind of looks neat. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. And then I actually want it to go darker towards the blue. That'll look nice. So let's try that. Let's go quite a bit darker here. Not dark enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard to like blend, um, you know, not knowing exactly what the backdrop looks like, and when it changes from dark to light, it can be, uh, you can have unintentional kind of, you know, areas where the, the values are a little too close, so it's kind of, I think for this, especially since it's like such a crazy design, I think it's going to be okay to put that, like, that glow make that punchy, make the actual ship maybe a little darker overall across the whole thing to just kind of like have that pop quite a bit more. Because again, it's one of those things where it's such a small element in the game that like if I don't give it that extra, you know, like readability, it can get lost. Um, so yeah, maybe I do need to kind of push it to closer to uh, how it's seen on the map, like the, the original kind of ghost ships where they're really punchy and high contrast and catch your eye and stuff like that. So let's just see what happens if I go quite a bit darker on the stuff. And we can just put that glow behind it instead of that daylight on these sails kind of feeling make it feel like it is at night. Might be a good thing. Might not be a bad thing to do. Yeah, I think I actually like that kind of value better anyways. Feels more spooky. I think it's okay having the sail go darker than the balloon anyways. Going too far? Maybe. But I think that um, one of the cool things is I can have this kind of like green edge to the front sail too, and that will allow me to kind of have a really neat looking separation between the two. That's cool. So yeah, as long as it's like dark to the edge and then have glow directly behind it, it's going to pop nicely. So we can do that. Also a nice purple touch. Always got to have that nice little purple. Um, all right. So let's see. This is the old hole. Uh, I think I might. Try just kind of darkening. <clears throat> the whole thing just enough to make that silhouette just kind of pop. 
pop out with the green. Um, so now, no issues there for that hull popping out. And then try it on a brighter backdrop. That definitely kind of screams out at us. So I can knock that back even more. Again, I don't think the hole was really any in any trouble for it, but I want to make sure that that's cleaned up nicely. Alright, this one. I'm just gonna feather the edge of that fog a bit. Just a little bit sloppy looking. Discord. I haven't been looking there yet. Should have. I had it pulled up because I'm like, I gotta make sure to keep an eye on that too. Pushing for the Jacob skin. Alright, let's see. Let's see. Should be. Aha, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's quite a bit of the purple is uh, directly behind the balloon. So, I need to move it more like here. I think that's kind of more the area that the balloon is on. It might be right here even. Somewhere in this range. It's probably scaled differently too. I just kind of blew it up till it seems okay. Um, so this is all the more reason I feel like maybe I do need to punch up the contrast. So let's go further with that. I think that works. More purple, more purple, more purple. <laughs> I hear ya. Lumina Sky. Yep. Okay, so I think that's decent for the hole. It's fine on the, the blue sky. It's very punchy, but I think that's okay. That rope is very just loud, uh, high contrast rather. So let's just kind of jump up to the balloon and lighten that rope a bit. I'm relatively happy with where the balloon is. Let me try turning off the sail. I could maybe get a little bit more of that glow around the outer edge, but I also haven't done the kind of like the billowing smoke. Uh, that's kind of interesting with the pirate one coming off of it. That's cool. Let's take a a gander at some so it's just kind of like the base hole with this nasty balloon and the pirate one yeah okay so I have quite a lot of contrast in the other ones I shouldn't be too afraid to kind of push it to those levels um, because I don't want it to not fit in the value strip, like the range of values, so I should push it. Uh, 
go ship. Alright. So in that case, let's bring it up even more. That might be too far, but I'd rather go too far and then pull back than not far enough. So 69. Nice. Here we go. I'll just kind of right at the very edges pull it back, but I do have better contrast now. I could even darken that. You know what? I think I'm happy with the hull like that. Now, the balloon and the sail. I should probably put on the correct sail first. Not that one either. There we go. Um, so if I darken the balloon more and I give it more of that kind of foggy glow, and I darken the sail more and give it more of that foggy glow, I think we'll be in a good spot. I do like how it how the sail itself is transitioning into the, the kind of fog there, so that's cool. So I don't want to lose that. Um, I am going to do a luminosity here. So not as dark. Is there that much glow coming off of the balloon? I guess there is a fair amount. I need to tighten that up. needed the sail to kind of like have its own more easy to see definition. Um, all right, so balloon, I'll come back to you. I just wanted there to be quite a lot of kind of uh, contrast at the edge of the sail. So now, let's see if this isn't going to look horrible. Uh, I'll use my pollution brush. like some parts of it like just turn directly into that kind of glow. It's the same thing here. Need to make sure it doesn't spread out too far though. So again, I need this to look reasonable with the other designs. Now I think that the balloon itself could have a little bit stronger glow right at the very edge. Just at the edge. There can be a little bit of overlap. Yeah, 
And then I might darken the, the balloon overall a little bit. Okay. Feeling better about it. make sure the sail isn't trying to kind of over like glow all over the hull that look kind of weird um, let's turn the hull back on turn off the sails I think I'll pull in the hull a little bit I think I might pull back on this glow now. Actually, like how dark it is in a lot of the parts. So, I like just right at the edges, it starts to transition. That looks pretty cool. All right, better check that on a lighter backdrop still looks okay. Not bad. Not bad. I don't know if any of these pieces are going to look any good with any other parts, but at least they'll look good together. All right. Cool. So I think I will darken the balloon now, and I think I'm actually getting into a pretty good spot for the whole thing. So let's this let's just try this out. Multiply. For the patches, I might, I might go just like a, a, like, different color. I wasn't really thinking about them. Um, I don't think they need to be like too visible. Uh, just like a darker or lighter color or value rather um, might look just fine. So let's see. First, I'm gonna deal with this though. Uh, the ropes themselves, I feel like if I go really dark with those, that'll work the best. Maybe. So let's try that. Either quite dark or quite light. Hi, Charlie. You getting on my lap? Yeah? Okay. So that's it, quite dark. Um, I think I prefer them being just kind of a bit darker and kind of tugging into the balloon there. It doesn't need to be like incredibly defined and visible. Maybe just that's fine. Yeah, I think that reads pretty well. I think the inside area of the balloon here could actually look neat if it's a different kind of local color than the other parts of the balloon. So like it's lighter on the inside so these kind of folded over flaps just kind of be a lot more visible. Ok, 
Kinder Egg. Layer of white chocolate on the inside. Alright. Yeah, dark ropes, ropes do feel a little better. Um, let's see. I feel like the sail, I could do a little bit more attention on that. But first, um, I want to see if I can actually make that green fog spilling out of the blimp look any good. Let's just try this. The one place where I'm like creating a weird fog and I'm not using my cloud brush for it. The inside should just be this bright green. I suppose that would have made more sense if it had that kind of like unholy glow. We can do that though. That's easy enough. Just uh, do this. So if we wanted that, that's easy enough to kind of work in there. And that looks pretty neat. So what do you think? Should it be dark on the inside or light on the inside? gas interior better. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. That's why I kept it. <laughs> like it's more eerie and, and kind of like what would make more sense. I'll, I'll push and pull. I'll, I'll kind of like render the, uh, the, the folds and stuff to kind of work with that better. Um, yeah, okay. Definitely getting a good kind of feedback on on the green inside working better. So I'll I'll tweak it a little bit, make that kind of read just a little better, I think. Uh, good to know. Alright. Is this the luminosity? And that one's a multiply. I'm gonna just start merging these layers together pretty soon. There's so many. Too many. Away a bit here. A more, a little more control. Cool. All right. It almost makes me want to make. Yeah, a little bit of the the like fabric just have a little bit more glow to it. Yeah, illuminating bulb like effect from the inside. Mm. That is kinda cool too. I think I might try something along those lines. Which makes the darker rope all the more interesting as well as the patches. So if I were to do that, let's see, I'm going to do it here, and one way to do that would be a very, uh, I guess I'll try something like 
this. And then... Where it's kind of facing away from me. Glowing at me from the inside. I don't know if that reads very well, but it's kind of what I'm going for with this. It's like a light was turned on inside. No, even if it doesn't work to give that illusion, it kind of adds a little bit of dimension to it, maybe. Maybe not. A luminous mushroom. Perfect. Okay, if I bring the wrinkles back, maybe that would help. But I did use that texture kind of brush to give it a little more kind of like canvasy feel, I suppose. Although yeah, I don't want it to make it feel like it's a weird glowing stone or something like that. Oh, it's a tough one. That's a texture property that I don't tend to render out that much. That kind of internal glow effect is, is pretty cool, though. I don't think I necessarily captured it. But now it just looks like a very shiny balloon, you know. So it's not bad. Um, I think one of the things that does actually assist it is the potential of these patches. So I think what I'll do is I'll actually add more of them. Um, and what this is going to allow me to do is kind of like have stuff silhouetted against something that glows. And then especially if there's some of them that get hit by a little bit of light, It'll kind of help you understand what is happening with the light a little bit more. Where there is this kind of like glowing material. So I'm actually just going to make a new layer just so that I can try these out all over the place. So if I do kind of like a lighter, smaller patch up there, it's like, okay, cool, that's getting a little bit of ambient light. It's not like a shadow on the balloon. But then, if I come down here, and throw another one down here, and like another one right here. that maybe. You can kind of like really 
get a sense of these things kind of like blocking out the light because it's a thicker material there or something like that. Um, at least that's what I hope it looks like. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually how it comes across. Let's change the shape of that. Does that make sense? Does it kind of look like... Let's uh, lock that. There we go. Well, it's something. I think I'll leave it. I think that looks pretty neat. Um, I feel like it, it does kind of feel like it has a glow. It's maybe not exactly how it needs to be handled, but it's not terrible. Um, but I do think that I want to get a little bit more of this kind of smoke billowing out. So now we'll bring it back here, kind of amp it up a bit more. I think I like the idea of making this kind of really pumped up, but then this kind of fold is kind of poking through bit more. So you kind of see the edge of it a bit better. I think it's not bad. Um, I almost wonder if we need to kind of like have that like powerful glow kind of showing just the raw kind of gas it's fullest in there or something like that. It's maybe a bit much. Small stitches too. Yeah. Something about the patches in the middle rear aren't sitting right. Okay. 
see. So like the middle rear. So is the middle rear let's see. This part and like this patch kind of thing. Patches overall. Oh, hello to uh, Michael in Croatia. Thank you. I'm very bad at looking at the chat. That was from quite a while ago. Okay. Oh, okay, I get it. Having like little stitches to kind of like put the patches on the balloon more so. The middle tear. So this one down here. I think I have a little bit of an idea of how to make that middle tear work a little better. It doesn't have the same kind of attention, I don't think, as the, the big tear, at least. I feel like if I darken a little around those edges and then have some of the mist coming at it, that might help. Um, brightening the center of the, the big hole takes a bit away from the loose flaps. Yeah. I think that they're just kind of like overexposed in general too, so it's a little hard to notice those um, with the mist kind of like billowing out. And it's a nice detail to have that, I feel. So maybe I can just try and regain a little bit more challenges. There's so many layers, I don't know where to begin. So I'm going to soften that. This actually, I think I really need to darken this flap. It shouldn't have any of that glow coming through the material. So it's kind of folding away, and like the fabric is turning towards us, so like the light isn't kind of like scattering through it to us. Whereas here, there's like more kind of holes it could go through. So if it turns, it's like, nope, bouncing out that way. So any of them that are kind of like turning towards us or the, the, the fabric isn't facing us perpendicularly, it's kind of, you know, away from us. That's why I kind of have this glow coming through only when it's like parts of the balloon that are kind of like directly kind of perpendicular to us. At least that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, yeah, I feel like if I darken those flaps, that helps I don't need to have that, that flap kind of so much brighter from the inside now. Because if anything, because there's this light kind of like spilling out and these folds are kind of turning away from it, now I feel like they're going to be missing out on a lot of the light that everything else is kind of using. Um, so let's lighten that up, or dark. Just tone that down a bit. <laughs> Words are hard, guys. Um, so I do want the, yeah, the, the like, those, like, just rips and tears to kind of just be more visible. I don't think I need, like, a cloud of smoke spilling out of it. Now it's more like there's just a weird magical thing kind of contained within this canvas, and there's just this big hole exposing a bit of it, so it's kind of more just kind of weird magic. That's kind of cool too. Um, so I think I'm just going to save myself the headache. Um, and first of all, I'm going to make a selection, invert that selection, and erase. Okay. And those patches I will leave. Part of the balloon. I'm just trying to see if there's anything I want to use as a layer before I flatten things. I'm about to crush it.
probably get rid of this whole layer. Yeah, I'll just leave that off. I don't need that one. That one's nice. The darker I go, the more it kind of fits with the rest of the sails. It does kind of feel a little more spooky. I like 38. Uh, that's fine. That's also fine. So the patches, these now I think need to go darker, for sure. And those are on a different version. Let's go a bit darker here too. All right. So now we're getting pretty intense. This is, I, I was like, I'm not gonna make it too crazy green and weird glowy and all the extreme contrast. And well, here we are, friends. But I changed my mind. But this reads so much stronger. I feel in uh, either scenario, which is very important, especially for something that's going to be on such different backgrounds at such small scot like size. Um, so that's important. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I feel like that's working now. Still maybe a little weird on like this exact colored backdrop, but that's just because the value of the smoke kind of turns into that, and then it kind of conflicts with the other values. But I don't think that is going to be very common. I think it's more something like this or like this, which I think is okay. Are cosmetics going to get their own tab in the items section of the profile? I think that, yeah, we might um, need to kind of like have a nice kind of sorting uh, ability for these if we end up kind of adding quite a lot. Because basically every dirigible design that we add has three pieces uh, that you can end up with in your inventory. So, you know, we need to make sure that's manageable. Um, I don't think it would go that route anytime soon, but I think it, personally, my own perspective, it would be like, oh, what if there was like, almost like the excavator kind of like tool where you can kind of like tuck all of that stuff into that one kind of interface, and then that way it wouldn't need its own big tab and it can all be kind of condensed into one section. Um, but that would be kind of like if we really got to the point where we had so many that we needed to tuck them all away. And even then, maybe it's nice to just have a simple kind of tab version. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't know specifically how we want to handle it, but yeah. Hmm. Awesome. All right. Just uh, was quickly catching up on the chat and the work chat. Cool. I'm glad you think it looks sharp. Uh, so, trying it out with the, the pirate skin real quick. Doesn't feel bad. Let's try a regular hull. That actually, I like that. That's fun. I'll try it on the regular sky. Yep. I'm okay with that. 
I was worried I wouldn't like it, but actually, I think that's pretty fun. Uh, all right, so turn this up to 100% capacity. Try out the ghost hull, regular sails. It's not like something I would necessarily be, you know, flying around with, but hey, that's kind of fun. Um, Looks like pirate bits. It's, look at how many layers are in that. That's crazy. So many more than I normally do. Uh, huh? Yeah. Okay. It's a good thing I was checking. See how the ropes don't line up? I need to make sure they go far enough that they actually connect. Because uh, I forgot that I made the balloon so droopy that this would be the case. So. It's also nice that I did those on a completely different layer. So, let's jump down to that. This layer here. And let's erase. smoothing on that. So I'm going to get it nice and straight. There we go. Alright. And this one do something a little more like that. And this one needs to line up on the right side. The middle one's not bad, but I'll just redo it anyways. Too thick. There, that's better. The ghost front sails aren't matching up either. Good good catch. I do need to make sure that works as well, because um, well, they do at least touch the balloon. I was worried they wouldn't, but I think that's an acceptable level of connection. Um, I might clean up that rope, though. I don't think it looks as nice as it could. Oh, to the normal hull. Thank you. Yep. Good catch. Yeah, I should probably just test each part. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. I totally missed it. I think that does matter. Um, Alright, so this does need to meet up here. Much better. Yeah, the ghost hull is slightly taller in the front. I think you're right. I think that it's okay if it's slightly taller, because that means that other sails will just kind of overlap it a little bit more. 
Um, but if it was shorter, then there would be an unfortunate gap uh, for basically every sale that connects to it or attempts to connect to it. Yeah, that would have that wouldn't have worked out so well if it had the uh, the current gap gone through. So thank you for catching that. All right, I think that the, the, the sale itself is a little lackluster still. Um, at least the kind of shaping back there. Not sure what I would want to do to change that. Um, Those ropes go through the ghost hole now. Should be behind that masthead or whatever that bird's called. Um, I'm trying to understand what you're saying by that. Put a texture over the back sail. Yeah, I think that would do enough. Um, yeah, these ropes here. Oh, good, you think? Okay. Because what I can do with how we've remade the the layers here is I can make the um, these ropes come out in front of stuff if we want. Right? So I could make it kind of do this make them kind of come out front for whatever ropes we want, if that's what we wanted, right? I don't know if that's what you were talking about. It's like if they would want that to go in front or not. Um, but right now, the way that I have it, it's kind of like they're on the inside. Um, so, I don't know. Whatever works, though. The front of the normal. So on the front of the so like up here, these ropes, like up at the the front, I guess that's what you're the masthead. Is that a masthead? Is that what that is? Should be behind the masthead. Oh, okay. So you're talking about because the the hull itself is higher than the other ones, right? So like here, how they don't line up. It's quite a bit different shape, right? Ah, okay. The worry is that the ropes would line up in a different spot. Okay, well, what we should do, just for making sure things are nicely consistent, is just kind of making the hole the ropes go to the, or have the, the top of the hull where the ropes touch be the exact same. So let's just pull that down there. That's where it needs to go. I'll make sure it works with the base sails, because that's what everything's working off of, right? So it needs to go right to that, at least. That's good there. That's good there. Let's just erase this to match. I suppose that's why um, when I was starting off the file, I just like duplicated this layer. So I was like, this is a good way to do it. And then I was just like, I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> so I threw that grouping away. 
I just wanted to work off a sketch up here. There we go. So this should um, prevent any kind of like future mess ups uh, with how things line up. So now if I hide this hole and I make sure that this is properly clipped to the layer, as it should be. Um, now, wait, no, this should be not clipped in there. Or should it? No, it should. I was confusing myself. Okay. Sick. All right. So now that should all link up correctly, I think. Um, Yeah, exactly. Like there are very particular parts that have to touch in exact ways, um, but thanks to you guys, I feel like we're catching any of those elements. Um, so many layers. That's the one. I just want to ease up the glow on this. I like this kind of flap coming out and really kind of more visible. So I'm just going to knock that glow back even more. I think I'll darken it too. Um, which means I need to find an appropriate layer to do that on. There's so many. This one might work, but that's a multiplier layer. That one's a luminosity. Okay, this, this layer is a normal layer. I can use that. This look better or worse. Mm, I think it works. It is four o'clock, so we've been going for a, a good while, five hours. Um, so I feel like I'm at a point where I should probably look to wrap it up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten. Did I just mess up a layer? Good. Okay. I think I should try and kind of flatten stuff down. At least on this balloon. And then just kind of tune it just a bit. That's going to be a little bit easier for me to push and pull exactly what I want. dark edge on that. So just I, I just really like those kind of popping out a bit more. I think because this is like in front of such a bright kind of you know light source want it to just silhouette against it. I like trying to look at it, but there's just so much light kind of overexposing everything around it. So all the detail of what you might have been able to see right there is just lost. In which case, do I even want to go darker with these? Maybe. Maybe not. I'll do the same over here. Um, but 
like the rope here because there's this bright light kind of like directly behind it. I also want a bit of the light to kind of bleed out around it, that kind of like bloom light effect. And you know what? Ultimately, if this looks weird, um, I think that it can be just kind of like excused away as like, oh, you know, it's just like burnt where that hole was. There was a fire that kind of just, you know, tore a hole in the side of it. And that's why it looks so kind of charred and crispy right at the edge there. Um, but okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of green spilling out around the edge of it. I'm just kind of this overexposed it's almost like light pollution happening from that. Okay, so yeah, maybe I went a little bit Too far with that kind of glowing edge or silhouette. So I'm going to just pull it back a little bit there. Um, I actually like it darker, darker down there, though. It just draws a lot of cool attention to itself. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, oh yeah, totally like some kind of fish skin. I feel like um, we mentioned this before and I, I actually really think it'd be a lot of fun to just explore the potential of it over like a few feedback Fridays or something with you guys. Um, but like the idea of like creating dirigible designs based off of old areas where basically um, to make them, you would have to kind of like uh, bring a whole bunch of resources from those areas to, to build that, that skin. So like a, a cool looking fish one, which would be a great shape for this, you know, could be like um, a sunken city uh, one that you'd have to like bring a bunch of kind of sand dollars and other stuff uh, to, to create it. Um, you know, ultimately, if people don't want to do that kind of stuff, then we won't make that. But if if there's enough demand, I I would imagine that's something we could totally do, and it would be a lot of fun. So let us know if you want to do that. And then you know, we don't need to do that right away either, because it's kind of like there's so much to do already with the area, and we don't need to you know put too much stuff right now. We can always add this kind of stuff in the future. Um, it's also a kind of a challenge to like figure out, okay, well, when and how do we add these things? Obviously, like an event skin is easy because it's like during that event, you'll kind of bring it in, drop it in the, the reward structure for the event. Easy peasy. Um, so, yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun to have uh, a few kind of very, you know, nice areas that could just have a little more attention. And then it's kind of like, okay, well, once you've kind of done stuff and you want to get a fresh kind of um, stretch your, your, your hunter legs in a different area for a bit, you can like run out to an old area and collect some extra bits and bobs from it to build the thing. Or maybe you just had tons left over from when you were there in the past, and now you can kind of just suddenly have a new design you can build. Um, so, you know, all kinds of ways to think about it. Maybe we'll try that out. I think it would be neat. All right, so I just wanted to add a little bit of kind of, I don't know, just greeble to the, the rudder down there. Again, I'm at the point where I think I could just merge layers and paint to kind of get 
Leave the little bits, which no one's ever going to see because they're going to be way smaller. Um, yeah, heatproof mage cloth sails. I like it. That would actually look really neat too. Um, yeah, it's always nice to have uh, like side goals. Like the cool thing about dirigibles is like they're super not required, so it's okay for us to like make, you know, an interesting and fun challenge. Um, and they could be. We could make it quite challenging if that's what you guys would want. Um, you know, I think that that's one of the great things about a system like this is, you know, we could kind of like, you know, make it like something you really got to earn to be able to show it off, you know. Um, so like a, a potentially cool thing could be like, oh, you need to have like a certain amount of catches of this kind of you know, mouse to be able to access this or something like that it could be neat. Um, and then it's kind of, you know, you could have these designs as sort of like, you know, bragging rights in a sense. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in your books, but I think it could be neat. Just getting some stitches put onto these. Yeah, like kind of like how there's the, you know, the um, the crown collector mouse. Um, I could totally imagine there would be, you know, like the crown collector dirigible kind of design. You know, and only people who have kind of like achieved such a feat, you know, has has access to it, or like the uh, the egg hunter kind of. Um, design or something like that. You know, you have to have captured every si or collected every single egg to be able to wear it. You know, might be a bit much, but might also be a perfect fit. All right, uh, just a little bit of glow. You know what? I feel like we're doing not bad. And I actually wasn't even noticing that it was the wrong sale. So that's a, a good sign that, you know, maybe they actually fit together okay. Um, we can mix and match. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's drooping onto the railing here. But you know what? That's okay. I feel like people will accept that. Uh, I do think we could do a little more texturing on the sale. And then that might be the end for that. All right, let's see. Yeah, Ron's a dirigible skin. I'm going to have to update her ship because it looks like garbage compared to everyone else's, I think. Um, it's a very old painting that we use on the map still, and it needs to look cool. Gilded ships, chrome ships. Chrome base when? We don't have chrome cheese either. We could have just chrome everything. What were we thinking? All right, so how do we want to handle this? So maybe just a little bit of texture should be enough. Actually, I should probably pull up the, uh, the bloom. So they have that, because I do want them to kind of feel like they belong together. Um, you know, I haven't used triangles. 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 It's a good texture tool. Um, pardon me. doesn't always work, but if it does, it'll be fun. don't like this. I feel like that's often what ends up happening with triangles. 
Um, but let's knock that back a lot. It just creates a little bit of texture. I think I just need to be more selective with how I use it. It's easy to overdo it, right? <laughs> Ronza is the, the Midas of Chrome. She already, like, she, instead of turning everything to gold, she, like, takes everything's gold and then turns everything into chrome. Perfect. Um, so there's a little bit of texture on it. It actually kind of works for the kind of like the effect of it kind of like melting into the the like um, ectoplasm. <laughs> I don't know what we're calling it. The green kind of glow. But this triangle texture actually kind of has a nice effect for that, I think. So I'm okay with that. Let's look at it on a darker backdrop, though. Yep. Turn it off for a second. That's way different. There's way more, like, just something there. It's maybe a bit strong, though. Let's turn that down a little. Put it to 62. So it's, it's a lot of exposure on it, but it at least adds some nice kind of variety to it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to try and just add a little bit of multiply. And that will pull it back. I just wanted to get some texture. That's it. And I think I can just erase away a little bit. Um, when I first kind of rendered the sail, I had a little bit more kind of like uh, spine kind of pushing uh, the, the different parts of it out. And I'm wondering if I want to try and kind of make that the case again. Because uh, I did like how that looked. So might be able to do that if I just kind of, I don't know. This is a tough one. Maybe if I went darker instead of lighter. It's got to go surprisingly dark, actually. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture that. Um, okay. So that is added texture. Any different with it behind or in front? Try maybe making this a little lighter. Don't know if I like that though. I think I'll smudge the top. 
top edge of that. Going away from the direction I need to. airship mouse. There was actually, um, I held a art contest a little while back and there was one of the, uh, the uh, entries which I loved. I think it was one of Dave's favorite for sure. There was um, kind of like an inflated mouse balloon uh, and it was awesome. Um, so I feel like if we did create a, uh, a mouse airship I would definitely kind of like try and base it off of that I like it a lot. All right. Um, you know what? Actually, I kind of like, kind of like it with a little bit of that kind of really gnarly texture right at the end. But I also like it turning into that glow. So maybe somewhere in between the two is good. Where it's like the glow is like really just right at the edge. one of Admiral Arg's skulls. Let's have a few of them, huh? Alright, let's see. I think I can pull back on that just bleeding glow. Just goes too close to the the balloon and that actually kind of Makes it harder to control the rendering out there. So we might be able to balance this just a little nicer now. Um, so if I lighten up just the inner part around here. Yeah, I feel like now I can kind of control that just a little bit better than I had before. So now there's at least this kind of like sense of there being these fins um, kind of coming out from the center. Um, and I like that. Uh, lighten it up right there. I also feel like stuff that I'm doing right now is fairly subtle, so I'm not sure how easy it is to even see the tiny adjustments. So hopefully it's not completely lost. Uh, let's take a look with different balloons. So here is with the pirate balloon, probably my favorite balloon. Um, that one's going to be quite valuable, I think, when people start to get that. Um, I mean, it's not the best match, but, you know, this little balloon tries. tries. Um, I should probably pull in some of the other designs that we have. So I'm going to give this a save. Um, and I think we're pretty much done rendering until, you know, I, I pull in the other ones and I see if it needs to look a little different um, just to kind of fit better but I think I'm pretty happy with where it's at it ended up you know not going down the kind of like you know radioactive green which I'm happy about it still definitely feels like this palette 
Um, so I'm happy about that. I think the the like the values. Uh, I was worried about kind of pushing those too far, um, but I'm glad that I think I I kind of figured out where it needs to be. It's just a little kind of more intense than I had anticipated. Um, the back sail, maybe I would lighten that up, but maybe that just means I need to darken other stuff even more. Uh, let's give it a flip. Actually, let's let's not get the flip yet. Let's bring in other designs. So close those, and let's see about placing embedded. Um, now this might be a bit spoilery, so heads up. I guess um, I'm I'm gonna be bringing in. Well, actually, maybe let's do the deluxe one first. This one's not a spoiler, um, so should be okay for you guys to see because it's one that you can definitely obtain pretty easily. It's probably one of the first dirigible kind of customizations that anyone will will try out. Um, So, yeah, I, I, I want to test it against the, uh, I want to test it against the resource one, but I also don't want to show you guys that. Like, you gotta, you gotta earn that one to see it. I'll leave it at that. All right, so, pop that down into the hole there. It's not bad. I like it better with this hole than the, the very original. It's got a little more of the kind of darks and lights um, that kind of maybe fit a little better. This one has that haziness about it though, whereas this is quite crisp and, and sharp, but I still feel like, you know, when it's shrunk down, that's pretty fun looking. Um, Alright, I'll get the sail for that. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so basically I feel like, you know, it's uh, in a decent spot. Cool. Yeah, as much as I want to test it with the, the resource one, I, I don't want to show you that since no one's seen it. Um, but I think that's probably in a good spot. Any last thoughts on it, though? <laughs> don't tell they have activated. Um, so obviously, uh, the pirate one you guys have seen now, um, not in game because I don't think anyone has dropped any of those, but they're going to be uh, quite nice to get. But yeah, the, I don't know if anyone's purchased the the resource dirigible yet. Someone could have, you know. People definitely, I believe, are are you know well off enough on Sky Resources that if they wanted to, they should be able to. I think, um, unless it requires. Uh, extra stuff. I don't think it is. I think it's just resources. Um, and, you know, yeah, the ore slash glass one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to test with uh, the Richard's dirigible either. No one's seen that one either. Um, so I'll, I'll let you guys find that one. Uh, yeah, all right. 
so yeah, no, no like tweaks or changes that anyone would try out. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that I drew the the pirate one on the last Feedback Friday. So you guys have seen it at least because of that. If if I didn't draw that one live, I wouldn't have let you see it because that one's a pretty probably one of my favorite. So you know. I would want that to be a surprise for people to discover. Um, let's see. Oh, thought we fixed that. Oh. All right. Well, it's a good thing it's not a widely known bug. There's just a typo thing in the flight log. Um, all right, so front, front sails are a bit blank. This is true. This is true. All right, let's see. I think, if anything, I would just add just a little more bright kind of triangle texture. Just a little lighter. Nothing much, just to, to like give it that texture. how different it can look depending on how big that brush is and like how heavy-handed you are with it. I don't know. Yeah. Front sail's a bit more ripped. I think maybe if we do a little more of that kind of green glow transition could be nice too. Right. Again, it's like one of those things where it's like, ah, I don't want to go too far with it. It's always something that I run the risk of is just pushing it further than I should. But the beauty is at least I can blame you guys if I end up doing that. Aha. All right, but yeah, um, more kind of like ripping and kind of just tearing on it could be nice. So I think I can kind of define the edge of this a little nicer if I just Paint it in there. And then just kind of having. Uh, that's why. It's like, why is this not showing up as intensely? Um, the layer I was on was set at a lower opacity. That makes sense. That checks out. All right. So then now I want to do the triangle again. Now I'm probably going to go too far with it.
I think the raggedy edge is, is a nice kind of just effect on these. Um, Pretty happy with that. Um, I see what's up. All right. Cool. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with this. So, with that, I'm going to post it on my art page so I can put up the, uh, the fine little Larry link. Um, and hopefully, ultimately, it actually does look good against the backdrop it's set to, because if it is on like this backdrop kind of color, which it isn't, but if it was in a spot that had that kind of value, I'm like, oh, I don't like how that looks. But like, it looks great on, on this light, and it looks relatively decent on, on the dark here. So I'm thinking that's OK. Wondering. I'm going to knock that back actually. Maybe even more. Just a hint. Because if it was that, or if I just have it be really subtle. There's at least a little more value kind of structure to work with, which is good. Um, if this on is good, because it just kind of adds a little more contrast, turn it up even more. Looks good on a dark background. It's pretty intense on a light background. Not too much. All right. You know what? I think I like it up. That's the outer glow stuff. Um, let's see. That's good. That I don't want. I could erase a little bit more of this near the very edges just to have a crisper silhouette. I think that's probably worth it. It's it's like if it if you were viewing it at full resolution always, then I wouldn't necessarily bother with this. But um because it's actually mostly going to be viewed very small. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that having a very clean, crisp silhouette is more important. So I think 
that will read nicer. Just a little bit of the details that I added there. Oops. My bad. Let's see if I can bring that back really quick. Just kind of enjoyed it. It was like just kind of these bolts. No one's ever going to see this either. I just did this because I wanted it. Okay, so that I think is going to have a stronger read. Yeah. All right, I'm happy with that. Better. Um, yeah, if anything, I would maybe sharpen the edges of the silhouettes, but I think that that's kind of really not super necessary. I don't think it needs to be like the most perfectly legible thing. Um, and I don't think it tune it too much considering the backgrounds it should be on. If I were to do that though. I'm always like, yep, yeah, all right, I'm done. Time to wrap up. And then I continue working on it for another 45 minutes. Okay. Uh -huh. So I could probably erase a little bit right there. So that silhouette edge is still crisp. I could pull that back where it goes over top of the sail, just so it doesn't interfere with other designs too much. I don't think it adds a lot by doing that. But if it messes up other designs, that's no fun. Uh, and then this, I think that the outer edge glow is kind of like the thing that can kind of make it look a little weird, but that said, I feel like it just, it just adds enough that I think it's important to keep it still. All right, well, I think we've overstayed our welcome on this dear ghost ship. Um, Bit too much haze between the front sail and the balloon. Hmm. Might be right. You might be right. Um, so, if I were to tune that, I would. I think it's actually the glow on the sail itself. It's you lose a little bit of that read, right? It's almost better if it doesn't have that glow, because it loses that silhouette a lot. Um, so I'm going to pull it back, even though I, I came in and added that more recently. I kind of feel like I might regret that a little. Because now it like you can see that silhouette better. Um, and it does still have texture enough. All right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I still have texture on it. I'm happy with that. 
Are you good? Great. All right, cool. So I'm going to actually export all this now. You guys get to enjoy watching that process. Um, so let's just make sure all this. Yeah, so here now I can actually kind of like just be like, well, why is it so fuzzy down there? I don't think that's good. I don't need that. That's just going to get in the way of other other patterns. Because this is sitting on top of all the other ones, and it's just going to have this weird kind of green haze over it. Which is not terrible, but I don't think we need it. It's fine up there, though. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Yeah. Alright, so balloon's good. weird artifacts. Need to clean up those weird artifacts. Not cool. Don't need those. Alright, so the ropes. You don't need that little random chunk of rope there. These are okay. That's okay. That is a little off. See up here how I did that? Um, glowing edge there it was not very well done and especially since I moved moved where that kind of uh, beam whatever it's called went so that's gone All right, this glow I don't like that there which is way too much of it up here There. It's just too much. Yeah, I'd rather bring in the tighter kind of glow right at the edge of stuff, because that'll read a lot nicer than this kind of hazy mist. It's a little too soft to even give any definition. Cool. All right. Feel better about that. regret making these ropes have a bit of a glow. Maybe. Okay. So the hole. Let's turn on the balloon again. Seems fine. Okay. Anything crazy weird with this? I suppose the sails glow. I can address a little bit. And let's just use a gentle brush here. Just to make sure that goes far enough. I don't think it's too big an issue. It's just a weird kind of. Artifact there. Um, let's see. I actually want to darken that little piece up there. Uh, there may not work out in the end. Eh. 
just gonna go with it. I don't know how that looks. I'm going with it. There's this kind of weird little streak there. I think I can get rid of that. Gone. And anything else? It's kind of weird that the glow kind of just ends abruptly there. rope, but then I need to be conscious of how it connects to the hull here, just in case it does overlap the hull instead of the hull overlapping it. I'm just going to ease up on that. And... Whew. All right. Looks very nice and ghastly. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. All right. So first way I'm outputting it is at full resolution, full thing exposed uh, on a transparent background. And this will be basically so that if we wanted to put it on a, a piece of kind of, you know, promo material, uh, like, you know, news post or, or email or something like that. You can just slap this on top. It should look nice. Uh, new folder. Ghost ship. All right, and then this one is going to be full. All right. I think what I could do is, if you guys want to see me exporting all this, it, there are quite a few like snips I need to do to do it. Um, or I could just kind of post what I have on my art page and wrap up the the stream and do all the the like exporting outside of that. Um, let me just bring this over here so you can see what I'm doing. If you did want to see that, so now I'm just doing the balloon. Uh, again, I'm going to do this one at full resolution. Um, so this one's going to be full. Exporting sounds fun. Why not? All right. So then this one's going to be the whole same deal, full resolution. And uh, I'm I'm basically giving the full resolution just so that there is kind of like. Um, uh, you know, somewhere online where we can upload this to a repository so we have the like full detailed version that we could kind of like pull down if we needed to do adjustments, you know, like if a different artist had to do it and they didn't have my PSD or something like that. Um, and, you know, for whatever other reasons. And then, of course, I'll upload the actual size that's used in game. Um, so this is full, full, and the sales, and then I also have to do thumbnails for all of them too. I don't know if it's sales or sale. I'm just going with sale probably sales. All right, so now I need to actually pull up an example of the finished originals. And I'll pull up the deluxe one. Okay, there we go. So this is an example of how they all look, kind of how many variants there are in each. Um, and then so the in-game size uh, is 320 pixels wide. So it goes down to 16%. And then I'll just use the same naming convention 
Oop, I didn't mean to hit that button. There we go. Alright, and get up to hole. Maybe 20. Save. I think when I've done this before, I did the uh, this version first, and then got to append full to the name afterwards. Noon. Cool. All right. So now, um, for the thumbnail, I have them all turned on. And then let's just give this a quick save again, just so I don't mess it up somehow. All right, so for the balloon portion, we're using 80 by 80 crops. Um, we crop it right around here. So we have kind of the front of the balloon. Um, and what's interesting is because of Had a weird filling in the background color. I don't know why I wanted to do that. It doesn't normally. Okay, and then this is kind of like similar thumbnail technique to the mice or uh, traps where I just have a one pixel border around it. So now this is the balloon thumbnail, which is a GIF with no transparency. And Save to that folder. All right. And then, because I have no better way of doing it, I just have to undo back to the original state and create a new crop. All right, so for the sale, it's kind of like the back top side of it. Uh, it looks really neat with the white. It's like overexposed there. That looks pretty cool. Looks like it's just kind of like getting burned up. So that's neat. All right. Same deal. And so the mice we export at 50 pixels. The items and uh, shop stuff is 80 pixels. So GIF, no transparency, and sale. Undo, 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 undo. There we go. And the hull is the last one, and I believe that's the back end of the hull. So you can kind of see the rudder. Maybe just clipping the balloon. It's probably good there. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, to create some emotes and stuff? Absolutely, you just need to ask. Um, generally, when people are kind of interested in getting kind of higher resolution or transparent images, as long as they're not, you know, going to use it to create their own, like, merchandise to sell to people, um, I'm, I'm basically always cool with kind of sharing um, you know, some of the assets within reason, you know, can't go crazy. Um, and just like, kind of like make everything super high res, and, you know, everyone can have it. But like, you know, if you ask me um, for a specific, you know, item or character or something like that, then I'm happy to, to share, you know, one or two of them with people. Um, all right. And then... So what one should we post to the art page? Dark background, light background. I don't like that background. I feel like maybe the dark one. Yeah, I mean, like, as long as you're not doing any harm with it, then I think it's great that people want to use them for stuff. Like, um, in the past, I've had a number of people kind of ask me for high res just so they could do 
like a cool phone backdrop and stuff like that. And then I'm always like, hey, share that with me. Um, and I, I love seeing that stuff. So yeah, I, I, and I think it'd be fun, you know, if people want to make uh, emotes on their on the Discord. That's awesome. I, I'm into, you know, more emotes. Better emotes is more fun. All right. Um, I'm on the Discord. If if you want to message me on the Discord about that specifically, that's that's okay. Um, as long as I don't get kind of just slammed with requests, then you know I'll leave I'll leave that open for now. Um, but yeah, again within reason. Um, but yeah, no, I think if it's the intention is to kind of improve the community's experience. Uh, I'm all for that. Um, all right, and so yeah, I'm going to use this backdrop I think for the uh, Facebook post. Uh, I think it's 960 for that. I'll do JPEG because it loves to compress stuff already, and we'll go down to it's not art FB posts. Go ship save. Cool. All right. Now, what do I want to write for my post? Uh, there's stuff in the air chats. Hang on. Ooh. Sorry, Maxine just shared a, uh, a pretty great trap skin for Halloween that I'm I'm enjoying a lot. All right, let me go to my art page, social medias, and uh, I'm gonna post the Larry link on my art page, um, so that'll be up in basically a minute. You can grab it there, and it's a good one. So yeah, definitely I'll share a link to that when it's up. Uh, where I don't I don't know how to navigate this anymore. They changed everything. I'm old and don't understand how things work when it's changed. Alright, add post. Upload. Is is this the right area? Add to album. Okay. Upload photos. Ghost. Good. The ghost ship ships. I'm very bad at like writing especially when I'm on stream. OK, 
Okay, today's Feedback Friday, we made a new dirigible skin this time to hopefully scare away the ghost ship rumored to have been spotted on the horizon. Make sure to grab and share this Larry link. Good enough. Post. Alright, posting. <laughs> Full res version of Captain Cannonball. Wanted as a tattoo, that's awesome. Uh, let me dig into that and um, feel free to send me a direct message. You can do that through my art page too. That's another uh, good place to contact me. Um, so let me just make sure I get a proper link for you guys tonight. Uh, don't know how to navigate this. Do I have to load all of the images to be able to get No, I should just be able to go to the home. Of the art. Why does that show up as the top post? Mm. Photos. There it is. There we go. Okay, so I think this should be the link to the art page. And then the Larry link is in that. So grab yourself a tasty Larry link, and then if you wanted to contact me directly, um, if you click on the Jacob Johnson art, and then uh, send message, I guess, at the top, I think. Uh, you can you can do that, and I'll be able to send you <clears throat> the, the Captain Cannonball, uh, and uh, should be able to do that anyways. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, I hope everyone is looking forward to collecting this and, and trying it out on their own kind of ship and swapping around parts. Uh, I'm certainly excited to do more of that. Uh, hope you guys had fun. I know it, it's more of a long one. We haven't done that in a little while, but I also enjoy doing long ones. Um, very fun. Good. Yay. I'm glad. Uh, Looks really great, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Again, it's also like one of those things where it's like there's so much detail that we can put into it, and I love doing that on stream with you guys. Um, and also when I don't have crazy deadlines, but uh, you know, when it's actually in game, it's it's kind of like you know shrunk down, so you do lose some of the the kind of details. So it's it's nice that you get to be here and kind of get to see it zoomed in and experience all the little kind of you know it's agreeable to get at it and then be just lost. Um, so well, I'm, I'm always happy to share. Um, I've even actually been considering, I don't know if I'm going to do it yet, but I probably should, um, considering just doing kind of like my own personal art streams every once in a while. I don't know if I would do a voice and camera one, because it I can only do that like once a week, I feel. Um, uh, so. I think it'd be nice to do. I, I don't do a lot of my own personal art, and I'd probably do like some I don't know, portraits and other characters and stuff that I haven't done enough of. Um, but I'd maybe just do it as a silent stream. So if people are interested in that, let me know. I'd love to know. Um, and you can just kind of tune in and throw on your own music or whatever, and just you know look in every once in a while and see how it's changed. Uh, definitely tune in. Well, thank you. That'd be that'd be lovely. Um, so yeah, if I do if I do that, you know, I'll post about it on the art page. And I should probably also do more, you know, other social media stuff. I'm so bad at this, terrible at it. Uh, but yeah, I got to get better at that. Anywho, <laughs> thank you a million times for hanging out with me. I always really appreciate you guys for sticking it out and just kind of being a part of the journey. I I love it. I think it's so just nice to have you guys hanging out with me. Um, and I want to do that more. So uh, thanks again. And you know what? You know, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Uh, you know, happy hunting. Uh, wash your hands. Wear a mask. Social distance. Black Lives Matter. All kinds of good, important things that we need to kind of, you know, make sure is the forefront. Um, but I hope you guys have a good weekend and happy hunting in the skies if you're up there with me 
uh, actually I ran off to do a, uh, a map with with some of the devs uh, Norman's working on one and and we're trying to get the um, the relic hunter uh, bases complete for a few people so we're just trying to crush those out but I'll be jumping back into the skies soon um, so I hope you're having fun with that too and uh, until next time I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't know what my exit is. It's just awkward. My exit is...